pointed out on the record, begins media one. It's July 15, 2021. Audio and video recording will continue to take place until all parties agree to go off the record. Please note that microphones are sensitive and may pick up whispering in private conversations. This is the video testimony of Christopher Cuomo in the matter of independent investigation on the New York State Executive Law 63.8. This deposition is being held at Cleary Gottlieb, located at 1 Liberty Plaza in New York, New York. My name is Chris Bedone. I'm the legal video specialist on behalf of U.S. Legal Support. Certified in our first Patricia Bidonde on behalf of U.S. Legal Support. I'm not related to any party in this action, nor am I financially interested in the outcome. Council will state their appearances for the record, after which the certified stenographer will swear in the witness. Good morning. I'm Jennifer Kennedy Park. I've been appointed a special deputy by the New York Attorney General for purposes of this matter, but normally I'm a partner at the law firm Cleary Gottlieb, Steen and Hamilton. I'm Ann Clark. I'm at the law firm of Vladek Raskin and Clark, but I'm here today also as a special deputy. I'm June Kim, also a partner at Cleary Gottlieb, but for today I'm a special deputy uh, for the first Deputy Attorney General of the State of New York. Good morning, I'm Payat Mustafa, I'm an associate of Cleary Gottlieb, and today I'm serving as special assistant to the special deputies. Uh, appearing on behalf of Mr. Cuomo, Isabel Kirshner, the law firm of Clayman and Rosenberg. Uh, Charles Clayman, representing Mr. Cuomo for Clayman and Rosenberg. I'm Hannah C. Pinella. I am a paralegal with Clayman and Rosenberg. Would you Sure. Sorry. Hold on. I'm dressing the mic for you. My, my name is not Mr. Brochin, by the way. <laughs> just, just thank you. Yes, you say it for the record. I'll fix it. Okay. Do you swear or affirm the testimony back to you? Yeah, I do. Mr. Cuomo, thank you for meeting with us today. As I just mentioned, my name is Jen Kennedy Park, and I've been appointed as a special deputy to the first deputy <coughs> attorney general. Um, the New York Attorney General has appointed the law firms of Cleary, Cleary Gottlieb, Steen and Hamilton, and Vladkin, Raskin, and Clark to conduct an independent investigation under New York Executive Law Section 63.8 into allegations of sexual harassment brought against Governor Andrew Cuomo, as well as the surrounding circumstances. You're here today pursuant to a subpoena issued in connection with that investigation. We're being video recorded, as you now know. Um, you're also under oath. That means you must testify fully and truthfully, just as if you were in a court of law sitting before a judge and jury. Your testimony is subject to the penalty of perjury. Do you understand? Yes. If you'd like to make any brief sworn statement, you have an opportunity to do so at the conclusion of my examination today, and I'll remind you and your counsel about that. Although this is a civil investigation, the New York Attorney General's office also has criminal enforcement powers. You have the right to refuse to answer any question I ask if answering the question would incriminate you. However, any failure to answer can be used against you in a court in a civil proceeding. Do you understand? Yes. Um, you're appearing today with your attorneys present. This is not a civil deposition, and so your attorneys will not be objecting. If they have a privilege assertion to make, they may do so, and then we will discuss it. Um, we have a court reporter present. As you can see, she needs to take down my questions and your answers, and so we have a clean record. Just make sure you give verbal answers. Do you understand? Yes. If at any time today you want to clarify an answer that you've given me previously, you should just let me know, and we'll take an opportunity to do so, okay? Yes. If you don't understand a question that I've asked, you should let me know, and I'll try to ask a better question, all right? Okay. Um, I'll be asking you today about names and specific dates and other specific information. Even if you don't remember a specific name or a specific date, I'd ask you to give me your best approximation, all right? Yes. If you need a break at any point, you should just let me know. If I've asked a question, <coughs> I just ask that you answer it before we take the break, all right? Yes. Um, can you confirm that you're not using any technology to make a recording of today's proceedings? Yes. Can your counsel confirm that as well? Yes. Okay. Um, and that, can you please confirm that you aren't and will not communicate with anyone in real time or during breaks about the substance of your testimony? Other than counsel. Other than counsel. Yes. And counsel, can you confirm that as well? Yes. Okay. 
Executive Law Section 63A, under which we're doing this investigation, um, is prohibits you and your counsel from revealing the substance of your testimony or the questions that we ask you to anyone else. It makes it a misdemeanor to make those disclosures. Do you understand? Yes. If anyone asks you to disclose any such information, <clears throat> we ask that you let us know. All right? Okay. Um, are you taking any medication or drugs that might make it difficult for you to understand my questions today? No. Have you had any alcohol today? No. Okay. Is there any reason you can't fully and truthfully answer my questions today? No. Okay. Can you please state your full name, your date of birth, your current home, and business addresses? Christopher Charles Mario Cuomo. My date of birth is... My current uh, home address is... Uh, my business address would be CNN. It is in, currently in... Have you ever given testimony before? Uh, no. Okay. Um, does anyone else other than your attorneys know that you're giving testimony to us today? Yes. Who? My family. Who in your family? My immediate family. Who in your immediate family? Everyone. Um, when you say immediate family, who do you mean? My wife, my siblings. When you say your siblings, does that include Governor Cuomo? Yes. And how did Governor Cuomo become aware that you were giving testimony today? I told him. Okay. When did you tell him? When I was subpoenaed. Okay. Does that also include your sister? I have three sisters. Or do all your sisters know that you're giving testimony today? Generally. What do you mean by generally? They may not know it's exactly today, but they knew that it was this week. Okay. Um, other than your sisters and Governor Cuomo, who else knows that you're giving testimony today? Maybe my producer. I haven't been clear about which day it was going to be, just that this week I'd be. Okay. The producer at your Dealing employer? This. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Not that I'm aware of. Did anyone from the executive chamber um, reach out to you after you informed your your brother that you were testifying before us? No. Did Melissa DeRosa reach out to you at any point after you received our subpoena? About testifying? At about anything. Yes. When was the last time you uh, were in communication with Ms. DeRosa? A couple of weeks ago, I think, uh, about a couple of weeks ago. Does that mean sometime in June? Uh, yes. Can you tell us what the substance of those communications were? My brother was visiting me, and she was asking uh, about what we were doing. Were those communications with Ms. DeRosa over the phone, in person, text? Text. You just do me a favor if you wait till I finish the question to answer. No problem. It just means it makes her life easier and then it'll make our day shorter. Okay. Um, when you were communicating by text with Ms. DeRosa in or about June regarding visiting your brother, um, were those communications at all about uh, the allegations of harassment against the governor? No. Before those communications in June with Ms. DeRosa, when you were visiting your brother, when was the last time you had communicated with Ms. DeRosa? To work back in time. I'm not sure. Uh, I have irregular communication with Melissa DeRosa. Okay. Um, which, in the month of May, did you have communications with Ms. DeRosa? I may have. Mm -hmm. And what was the topic of those, com those communications? I don't remember this entire breadth of it. Okay. Were any of those communications in May with Ms. DeRosa about the allegations of sexual harassment against the governor or this investigation? No. And how, what were those communications by text as well? I think almost 
I, mean, I may have had a phone call. I don't remember one, but it would be uh, almost certainly by text. And what were the topics of those communications? I don't remember, but they were just basic things about what was going on in Andrew's life or my own. And say that again. I'm sorry. Uh, what was going on in Andrew's life uh, or my own? Um, when you say Andrew's life, um, what were you talking about with respect to Governor Cuomo's life? His personal life. Um, after you received your subpoena, uh, did you communicate with anyone else in the executive chamber? About? Anyone else, about anything. No. And when you um, told Governor Cuomo that you would be giving testimony in this investigation, what else did you discuss with him? On that occasion? On that occasion. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember what the specifics of the conversation were about. Mm -hmm. Do you remember generally what the conversation was about? I remember telling him that I had gotten a subpoena. Mm -hmm. And we then were talking about. Did you discuss the content of your testimony? No, not, not at that time. On that occasion, did you discuss any of the allegations of sexual harassment against Governor Cuomo? Not that I recall. Okay. Not that I recall, sorry. Have you discussed the contents of your testimony with anyone in the executive chamber? No. And let me just clarify, when I say executive chamber today, I mean the executive chamber and consultants they utilize for purposes of things like press relations. So that would include, for example, Steve Cohen. Does that change your answers at all? About? About whether you've communicated with anyone in the executive chamber about the contents of your testimony today. No. Okay. What did you do to prepare for your testimony? I met with counsel. Anything else? I reviewed um, documents. What documents did you review? Documents uh, supplied by counsel. And what were those documents? Objection. That's privilege. Do you know how your counsel obtained those documents? No. You haven't produced any documents in response to our document subpoena, is that correct? Correct. Okay, why don't we take a look at tab two. This is a binder today we're going to use for our exhibits. And if you um, open up to tab two, and you should take a look at the full exhibit, and then when you're ready um, to proceed answering questions about it, just let me know. This is the subpoena that was sent? I'll ask you a question in a minute. Why don't you take a look and then I'll ask you. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Um, do you recognize this as the subpoena for documents that you were sent as part of this investigation? Yes. Okay. And what did you do to comply with this subpoena? I went through my phone and looked for communications. Okay. Um, you just pointed to the phone that's sitting next to you. Is that an iPhone? It is. Do you have any other electronic communication devices other than that iPhone? Um, no. And how many uh, email addresses do you have? I don't know. You're talking about that he controls? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Your Can email you addresses. Yeah. Oh, my own. Your email addresses. I think one that would be relevant to any communications here, I have two email addresses. One is a CNN address. One is a Gmail address. So your only two email addresses are your, your work address at CNN and the yes. Gmail account. Is that right? Yes. I, I have an old uh, Gmail account, but I, I don't use it. Okay. So, so maybe two Gmail accounts. Right. Okay. Um, and how many phone numbers do you have? I have two 
cell phone numbers that are on the same device, two SIM cards on the same iPhone. So that iPhone has two SIM cards right there? Yes. Okay. Um, do you use social media accounts? I do. Which ones? Various. Can you tell me which ones? Twitter. Okay. Instagram. Uh, Facebook, professionally, not really personally. That's it. Do you use any apps like WhatsApp or Snapchat? Uh, I, I have them. I don't use them very often. Okay. Do you have a personal computer? I have several. How many? Um, two or three. Are they all your personal property or any of them your employers? None is. Yeah. They're all my employers. Okay. We just have to be a little more careful about talking over each other, okay? She's doing a great job, but um, they're all your employers. I'm sorry about that. And if you, if you uh, want to give me any instruction, I'm happy to take it. Um, all of your computers belong to CNN? Yes. So when uh, you collected documents or searched for documents in response to this subpoena that's at tab two that we've marked as an exhibit, did you search all three of your email accounts? No, because the third one I told you about I haven't used in many years and I haven't offered to anybody. Okay. In fact, I don't even think it's on my phone anymore. So you searched your CNN email address and the Gmail account that you used? I did use. not. Uh, well, yes, I did. but. I knew that there were no CNN uh, email possible. Okay. And is that because you didn't use your CNN email account to communicate about issues related to your brother? Yes. And you located no emails in your Gmail account? No. Okay. And then you said you had uh, two different phone numbers. Did you search the text messages affiliated with those two phone numbers? Yes. And you found no text messages that were responsive to the subpoena? No. Okay. Did you search your DMs for any of your social media accounts? Uh, yes. And you found no DMs that were responsive no. to the subpoena? No. Okay. And did you search any of the apps, uh, like WhatsApp and the like? Yes. And you didn't find anything on there that was responsive to the subpoena? No. Okay. Um, we've been told that you have a practice of deleting texts and email messages as soon as you have read them. Is that accurate? Yes. And why do you do that? I have a constant and consistent concern about being hacked or someone obtaining my device and violating the trust of people who have put their trust in me. And when you say people who have put your trust in you, who are you referring to? Sources, uh, people who are in very sensitive situations that share information that they are really hoping never goes anywhere else. And the people that you communicate with using email and text message, do you ever ask them to delete their communications with you? On occasion. And why do you do that? Depends on the situation. Okay. Why don't you turn to tab one of that binder? Um, we'll mark this as the next exhibit. Have you seen this document before today? Tab one. Yes. And is this the subpoena for testimony you received from the New York Attorney General's office? Yes. And did you read the subpoena before today? Yes. Okay. And you understand that your testimony today is being taken pursuant to that subpoena, correct? Yes. Okay. You can go ahead and put that aside for a few minutes. 
Um, can you describe your educational history for us? I have a law degree. From where? Fordham. Is that the only advanced degree that you have? Yes. Um, prior to December of 2020, how often did you speak to senior members of the governor's staff? Irregularly. And by irregularly, what do you mean? Very infrequently. Can you put any approximation on it, or is it event-driven? It was event-driven. Okay. And what kind of events would cause you to speak to members of the governor's staff? Occasions that they were giving me information about or passing along things that had happened in the administration. You know, generally, that's what it would be. Can you give me an example prior to December of 2020? Here is uh, information about the Cuomo Bridge uh, or a request for whether or not I would be coming to an event at uh, the mansion for holidays. So almost always personal in nature. And what do you mean by personal in nature? About family uh, and what was happening on a personal affairs level. And who within the governor's senior staff are you communicating about things that are personal in nature? Usually the administrative staff. Um, by that whom do you mean? Stephanie Benton. And just to make sure I understand this, you're communicating with Benton in more of like an organizational role? Are you going to be here? Are you going to be there? This is happening with the family? Are you coming kind of thing? Can you talk to your brother? Okay. And then you said um, passing along information from the administration. The example you gave was information about the, the, the bridge, for example. Are they acting as a source in that occasion, in those circumstances? Are they passing information to you as a source for you? I don't understand. You're a journalist, right? Yes. When they're passing information to you about the administration, are they doing so as a source of information so you can use it in your reporting? No. Okay, then why are they doing it, to your understanding? Because he's my brother, the governor. And do you have an understanding as to whether you're, in those occasions your advice or counsel is being sought? Sometimes. And can you give me an example of a situation prior to December of 2020 when your advice or counsel was sought by the, um, the staff of the executive chamber? Discussions about initiatives uh, with the pandemic and messaging from the governor about different aspects of how he was handling the COVID crisis. Is it fair to say that they're in those circumstances looking to you for your expertise in communications? Maybe. How did you view your role? I'm the governor's brother. Did you view this as providing guidance or counsel or advice? Generally. And when you're talking about infrequently communicating with members of the governor's staff, other than Ms. Benton, who are you communicating with? Melissa DeRosa. Anyone else? Primarily, it would be Melissa DeRosa. Are there occasions on which you communicate with anyone else in the executive chamber prior to December of 2020 other than Ms. DeRosa and Ms. Benton? Maybe, but not that I recall specifically. Okay. Um, why don't we talk about some specific people and see if that helps your recollection. 
Um, prior to December of 2020, did you communicate with Peter Ajamian? Not that I recall. Do you know who Peter Ajamian is? Yes, in terms, I, I know that he has something to do with the press, media, communications apparatus. Have you ever met him? I probably have met him. I don't know him well. Um, I don't know that I would recognize him uh, until it was connected for me that that's who he was. Okay. Um, what about Rich as a party? You communicate with him prior to December of 2020? Maybe. Not anything I remember specifically. And have you met Mr. As a party? Um, I, again, probably, but not in any way that is very memorable to me outside being at an event where they are. What do you understand Mr. Azapardi's role is in the chamber? Uh, same as Mr. Jemian, that they're part of the communications apparatus. Um, what about Larry Schwartz? Did you communicate with Mr. Schwartz prior to December of 2020? Yes. What did you communicate with Mr. Schwartz about? Um, over the years, different things. Uh, most recently, uh, COVID-related acquisitions. How often do you communicate with Mr. Schwartz? Very rarely. Um, can you put a number on that? Not easily. When was the last time you communicated with Mr. Schwartz? Maybe a month or so ago. Sometime in June? Maybe, or May. In May or June, do you recall what the topic of your communications were with Mr. Schwartz? Yes, it was about trying to help somebody trying to help somebody who had suffered a personal loss. Have you ever communicated with Mr. Schwartz about the allegations of harassment against Governor Cuomo? No, not that I recall. Uh, what about Linda Lacewell? Prior to December of 2020, did you communicate with Ms. Lacewell? Not that I recall. Have you met Ms. Lacewell? Maybe, uh, not in a way that I was familiar with her or that we had spent time together. What about Steve Cohen? Prior to December of 2020, did you communicate with Steve Cohen? Yes. Okay. Um, how often do you communicate with Mr. Cohen? Very infrequently. Does Mr. Cohen provide you legal advice? He does not. When was the last time you communicated with Mr. Cohen? I'm, I'm not sure, um, a month or so. And a month or so ago, do you recall what the topic of, of communication was with Mr. Cohen? Um, not specifically. Generally? I think we were talking about the timing of this process, like how long this would be and what would happen uh, politically. What prompted the communication with Mr. Cohen about the timing of this process? I don't remember. Was it just you and Mr. Cohen speaking? Yes. And what do you remember about what was communicated between the two of you about the timing of this process? I remember not really getting any better understanding um, from him of it. It was just speculation. Were you trying to get an understanding from Mr. Cohen? 
Is that the purpose of the conversation? I suppose. And why were you trying to get an understanding of the timing of the process, this process? To understand what would happen next and when. Did you share whatever you discussed with Mr. Cohen with anyone? Not that I can remember. Not your brother? No. Prior to that um, communication with Mr. Cohen about the timing of this process, do you recall when before that you had communicated with him? No. Have you ever communicated with Mr. Cohen about the allegations of sexual harassment against Governor Cuomo? Yes. Okay. Um, what's your relationship with the Kivet firm? None. I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Um, do you know who Maggie Moran is? No. Do you know Josh Vlasto? Yes. Okay. Do you know what Josh Vlasto's role with respect to the executive chamber is? None. Do you know where he's currently employed? No. Do you know Rich Bamberger? Yes. How do you know Mr. Bamberger? From his work uh, with the governor. And do you know where he's currently employed? Not specifically. Generally? I think he's at a PR firm. I should have asked you, how do you know Mr. Vlasto? From his work with the governor. Do you, know, um, do you have a relationship with the Global Strategy Group? No. You're not a client of theirs? No. Okay. Um, do you know Jeff Pollack? Yes. How do you know Mr. Pollack? From his work in politics. How long have you known him? A long time. What about Liz Smith? Do you know her? Yes. And how do you know Ms. Smith? Uh, she is a friend, but I know her from her work in politics. And do you know what, where she is employed? No. Do you know where Mr. Pollack is employed? Global Strategies Group. We've talked about your communications um, with members of the executive chamber staff, sort of frequency and topics. I'm interested now in turning to talk about your brother, the governor. Um, how often do you speak to the governor about the business of the state, not personal things, but state business? Infrequently. Can you put any numbers around that? It's event driven. Driven. Can you give me some examples prior to December of 2020 of what events would drive you to discuss state business with your brother? The pandemic. Okay. Prior to the pandemic, what kind of events would cause you to speak to your brother about state business? By state business, does that include like when he's going to run, when, like an election and campaigning, as well as just stuff as he's governor, like both? That's a good question. Let's, let's separate both. Let's just talk about non-campaign related state business for a moment. We'll cover campaign in a second. Um, he would reach out to me about ideas, about areas of potential policy moves that were a reaction or part of what was happening in the news at the time. Um, let's say uh, guns or uh, crime. Anything else you can recall? Any other kind of state business topics you discussed prior to the pandemic? Not specifically, no. Sorry. With Governor Cuomo. Sorry. Not specifically. I'm sorry. Um, and what about campaign-related discussions? How often did you talk to Governor Cuomo about campaign-related issues? As needed. 
And when the campaign is in full effect, are you in frequent contact with Governor Cuomo about the campaign? More so than normally. And can you compare the two to us? Well, you said more so than normally. So what's normal and what's more so? I'm not sure how to answer the question. Um, I hear more from my brother when he is in a particular time of need of um, my take on what's happening. Have you ever talked to um, your brother about the Me Too movement? Yes. And tell us what you've discussed with Governor Cuomo about the Me Too movement. Generally, probably the role of the movement in whatever the matter of the moment is. Can you give me a more specific example of what you're referring to? Um, what was happening in the news with respect uh, to advancing the interests of um, Me Too and I, on occasion where he was in terms of what was happening some, you know, with someone else somewhere else and what that would mean. I'm not sure I followed that last, se last sentence. You said um, what was happening in the news with respect to advancing the interests of Me Too. What does that mean? What the dynamic was in a certain situation that was being covered at the time um, and how Me Too was relevant and how it was affecting the situation. Oh, so with respect to particular people, for example, is that what you're saying? Um, yes. And are there particular people that you and the governor um, discussed with respect to the Me Too movement? Not that I recall specifically. Ever discuss Harvey Weinstein? I don't think so. Ever discuss Joe Biden? And the Me Too movement? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Can you recall any particular individuals you discussed with the governor with respect to the Me Too movement? Former President Trump. And what did you and your uh, Governor Cuomo discuss about former President Trump and the Me Too movement? The nature of what was resonating and what wasn't and why and what that meant about what was happening in society and the media. And what was Governor Cuomo's perspective that he conveyed to you? That it is highly political in perspective. That we haven't gotten to a place where we all see things the same way. And that was something that he believed very much politically benefited the former president, that it was very different how things were viewed in his camp, I guess you'd call it. Um, what was the timing of the conversations uh, you had with Governor Cuomo about uh, former President Donald Trump? We spoke about the president often during his entire administration. And so these conversations about the Me Too movement and Donald Trump were often during uh, President Trump's administration? Not, I wouldn't say often, but event-driven, but we spoke about the administration frequently. Um, you also told me that uh, when I asked you for a specific example of talking to Governor Cuomo about the Me Too movement, you said um, where he was in terms of what was happening with someone else somewhere else and what that would mean. Can you explain what you mean by that? His opinion or questions about what was happening and what it meant and what I knew 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Can you give me an example of a specific Me Too related event that falls into that category that you discussed with Governor Cuomo? Not offhand. These conversations um, with Governor Cuomo about the Me Too movement happened after December 20th, 2020 as well? Yes. Yeah, we'll come back to those in a little bit. Um, prior to December of 2020, did you ever talk to the governor about um, hiring, firing within the executive chamber? Can I ask a quick follow-up? Of course, sorry. Uh, did you talk to the governor about Brett Kavanaugh? Uh, yes. And what, what did you talk to him about Brett Kavanaugh? What I knew about, uh, as the story was developing, uh, what uh, the justice, what, well, not then, what, what uh, the judge then was dealing with in terms of uh, what was being said about him versus what he was trying to control in perception and what was happening in terms of his potential fate. How many discussions with the governor about uh, uh, the complainants and the allegations that have been made? Um, multiple. What was his view? Of the complaints that they it, you're talking about in his situation in, in Justice Kavanaugh. Oh, in just I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I didn't understand the question. Sorry. Um, Discussions with the governor about the accusers in uh, Justice Kavanaugh's. Well, I remember only discussing one uh, accuser mm -hmm. with Ms. Ford. with my brother. Yes. What's your question? And what did he say about it? I don't remember specifically, but he was following the situation with interest like everybody else. Did he express a view as to whether she should be believed? Um, I don't remember him specifically talking to me about that, no. Did, she express, did he express a view about how she was being treated? Not that I can remember. Did he express the view as to whether uh, Brett Kavanaugh should be confirmed? I don't remember a conclusion, but I remember him believing that Kavanaugh was in a lot of trouble. But just as a practical, as a practical matter, that he appeared to be in trouble. In trouble. Yes. He did not. Did he express a view at all whether he should be confirmed? I don't remember discussing that with him directly. Sorry. Are you aware that your um, brother made changes to the sexual harassment laws in the state of New York? Vaguely. And um, what's your vague knowledge of, or vague understanding of those changes? I don't have one. Do you, did you understand that the changes to the laws of sexual harassment in New York were uh, such that it was easier for someone to prove an allegation or establish an allegation of sexual harassment? I, I guess so. Did you ever talk to Governor Cuomo about the changes that were made to the laws of sexual harassment in the state of New York? Not that I recall. Did you ever talk to any member of his staff about the changes in the law in New York on sexual harassment? Not that I can remember. Did you ever talk to any of his press consultants about the changes in the law uh, in New York on sexual harassment? I do not believe so. Um, before we were talking about um, state business and whether you spoke to Governor Cuomo about state business, um, have you ever talked to Governor Cuomo about the operations or running of the executive chamber? No. Um, have you ever spoken to Governor Cuomo about hiring or firing of anyone on the executive chamber staff? No. Promoting anyone on the executive chamber staff? I don't think so. Did you ever speak to Governor Cuomo about the promotion of Melissa DeRosa to the position of secretary to the governor? No. 
Um, did he ever talk to you at all about the tenure of, of people on the staff in the executive chamber? How long people stay? No, I don't remember anything specific about that. Did he ever speak to you about meeting people at events and hiring them to become members of the staff of the executive chamber? No. Has the governor ever spoken to you about his interactions with the PSU, the Protective Services Unit? No. <clears throat> Excuse me, no. Has he ever complained to you or vented to you about his interactions with any member of the PSU? No. I don't know what the PSU is. Sure, that's a good question. So the PSU is the unit of state troopers that protect oh. Governor Cuomo. Oh. Okay, so maybe I'll ask the questions again. So has the governor ever spoken to you about his interactions with the PSU? No, not specifically. Generally? I can't believe that I was the governor's son for 12 years and the brother of the governor for now 12, almost 12 years, and I never heard that before, PSU. Anyway. You learn something learn new something. every day. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to be a No, no, no. That's just, okay. And I, I should I'd clarify never... when I say Governor Cuomo. No, I'm it's talking not, about Andrew It's got to be on me. I just, I'd never heard it. I'm okay. sorry. No worries. Please tell me your question again. Sure. Has Governor Cuomo ever spoken to you about his interactions with members of the PSU? I remember him uh, talking about him uh, having uh, a bond with some of his um, troopers uh, making jokes when I would see them uh, with him about how physically superior they were to me um, and that type of stuff. Okay. Um, and which troopers did he talk to you about having a bond with? I don't remember names, um, you know, w w with all due respect. I, I just, I don't remember names that well uh, if I'm not in constant contact with them. But he seemed to have a core group and, and they moved. And so when I would see him, uh, he would talk to me with them and talk about them. That was my exposure to that kind of conversation and his, his thoughts. Okay. Um, did he ever, in your presence, talk to any member of the PSU about their personal life? Um, I believe so. Okay, and tell us about that family questions. Mm -hmm. I remember, not, not, well, I remember uh, he would often discuss timing with them um, about when we would be back and when they needed to be back or if anything like that when it was on weekends. Okay. Um, and when you say um, that, that the, you heard the governor speak to members of the PSU about family question, did you ever hear him talk to any member of the PSU uh, about getting married? No, not specifically. Um, generally? No, I, I don't remember that ever being discussed. Ma any topic of marriage coming up with the PSU? I don't remember him ever talking about getting married with any members of the PSU. Do you remember um, Governor Cuomo ever discussing the topic of marriage generally in front of members of the PSU or with members of the PSU? No. Um, did you ever hear the governor discuss with any members of the PSU their sex lives? No. Or his sex life? No. Okay. Did you ever hear or observe the governor comment on the appearance of any member of the PSU? Yes. Tell us about that. Look how much bigger this guy is than you. Other than comparing the size of a trooper to your size, no. Mr. Cuomo, did you hear the governor comment on the appearance of any members of the PSC? No. Okay. Did you ever hear him make comments of a sexual nature to any members of the PSU? No. You said you heard him um, joke, other than the joke about comparing your physical appearance to their physical appearance. What other kinds of jokes did you hear the governor engage with, with members of the PSU? There was a consistent theme of the governor being better than I am at whatever we were engaged in at the time. Did you ever see the governor touch any member of the PSU? Yes. Okay, and tell us about that. Handshakes. 
pat on the shoulder. What about hugs? Not that I remember. It very well could have happened. Mm -hmm. um, I just, specific response, I don't remember actually seeing it. Uh, what about kisses? No. Did you ever hear the governor address any members of the PSU using a term of affection? Do you know what I mean by that? Um, no. Give you some examples. Honey, darling, sweetheart, dear. No. Um, I'm going to move They're on. They're all men, by the way. Well, that's a good uh, question. Have you, ever, um, have you ever seen a member of the PSU that was a woman? Not that I can recall. Do you ever see your brother, the, the governor, get angry with any or upset with any members of the PSC for anything they did or didn't do? No, ma'am. Um, did your brother also ever just oh. in case again? I, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want any suggestion. I'm not giving him the most. I have seen female members of the PSU. I was the governor's son for 12 years, and my father had um, one or two uh, members of the unit. Uh, that were women. So yes, I have seen them before. I, I don't believe I've, I've seen a female member of my brother's PSU, but I, I may have. Um, that's a, a very fair and important observation. And as I'm asking questions today, when I'm talking about Governor Cuomo, I'm talking about Andrew Cuomo, unless I tell you otherwise. Okay. okay? So that I understand the situation that you're in. That could be confusing. Um, has Governor Cuomo ever complained to you about any action taken by the PSU? Action taken? Let me give you an example. Ever complain about their driving? Um, no, not in a serious way. Um, in a non-serious way? Again, my brother likes to joke. Um, he considers himself a very good driver. And so what's the joke? I'm better than you are okay. at driving. Um, did you ever hear him seriously complain about the driving of any member of the PSU? No. Um, the governor ever talked to you about having any members of the U PSU fired? No. Transferred? No. Demoted? No. Uh, have you ever been with the governor when he has declined coverage by, of the PSU? Meaning, just to find that term, meaning said, Troopers, you don't need to be with me when I'm going to do this event or this activity. I have been with my brother when he has attempted that. Okay. And tell us what happens. They stay, in my experience. Mm -hmm. um, how often have you um, seen your brother attempt to decline coverage? A couple of times. Okay. And what were the um, occasions? Fishing. So the troopers go fishing with you anyway? No, they, I think I remember troopers fishing with us maybe once. I remember them or someone else related to what you call PSU being in boats that were somewhere around. Most often they would just stay at the marina and then be there when we got back. I don't know what they did in between. Um, Ms. Clark and Mr. Kim, I'm going to move off talking to you at the PSU for now, unless you have other questions. Okay. Um, you told me earlier that you attend some social events at the executive mansion. Is that right? Yes. How often you've, have you attended social events at the mansion? During my brother's? During your brother's administration. Very infrequently. Okay. Um, so infrequent that you could tell me which ones you've been at? I went to one or two holidays there. I went to the unveiling of my father's photo. I, that's all I can remember. Have you attended any social events for the executive chamber outside of the executive mansion? I don't think so. Um, have you ever attended a Super Bowl party? Yes. Uh, and when was that? I think I went to two of them. 
but some years ago. Can you ballpark what years it was? No. Um, 2015, 2016, 2017, or before that? Maybe before that, um, or one of those. Um, do you recall uh, where either of the two Super Bowl parties were? Yes. Where were they? They were both. I think they were both. Certainly one was at this bar restaurant on the east side of Manhattan What's in the 70s or 80s. I don't remember the specific name. Um, but I don't remember the specific name. On either of those uh, Super Bowl party events, were other members of your family present? Yes. Um, let's start, if you can, tell us which family members were at which of the two. Or if you I remember my them. sister Madeline. Okay. Maybe she was the only one, actually. Maybe she, she may have been the only one. I don't remember any of the other. Um, was Madeline Cuomo at both of the Super Bowl parties you remember being at, or just one? I only, I remember one. I'm not sure. Okay. At, at the Super Bowl parties that you attended, did you see the governor interacting with members of his senior staff? I remember him interacting with a lot of people. I don't specifically remember who. How many people were um, at each of these Super Bowl parties? Dozens and dozens. So 50 <clears throat> ballpark? Maybe more. Maybe more. I think certainly more. Okay. Um, at either of the, the occasions uh, for these Super Bowl parties, did you or any member of your family raise any concern about interactions between Governor Cuomo and members of his senior staff? Not that I'm aware of. Did you or any members of your family observe the governor dancing with any members of his senior staff? Not that I'm aware of. Did no. You? No, I did not. Okay. Um, did you hear about that? No. Um, at, at either of these Super Bowl parties, did you observe anyone sitting on your brother's lap? No. Did anyone tell you that that had happened at either of these Super Bowl parties? I think at one of the Super Bowl parties was with me and was all over for some period of it, um, just to be complete. Putting aside, um, um, did you ever hear anything or observe anything either about either of these Super Bowl parties of a member of staff sitting on your brother's lap? Not that I can remember. Or being too close to your brother? No. Or learning that your sister had complained about that? I've never heard anything about that. Other than those two Super Bowl parties and the two holiday parties and the unveiling of your father's photo, are there any other social events you've attended with the executive chamber? There may be, uh, not that I can remember. Um, on any occasion, whether at these events or some other event, um, have you observed the governor touching members of his staff? Yes. What kind of touching? Um, uh, the customary touching for him and hellos and goodbyes. Can you tell us what is the customary touching for Governor Cuomo for hellos and goodbyes? Um, hand on the arm, uh, the men, women, um, affectionate. Um, you know, with men, he's going to, you know, shake hands, but hand on your arm, two arms. If it's me, he's hug and kiss. Um, uh, women, if he knows them, um, he's going to, you know, do the lean in kiss thing. You know, I mean, he's affectionate. Um. Let, let's start with the men and make sure I just have an understanding. So with men, the customary greeting you've observed for Governor Cuomo is to grab them on the forearm or maybe both forearms while shaking hands. Handshake, handshake grab, yeah. you know, hand, hug. It depends who the person is. 
Um, but Andrew can be, you know, very affectionate. Have you ever seen him uh, kiss a man? Yes. Uh, on the cheek? Yes. On the lips? Not that I can recall. Has Governor Cuomo ever kissed you on the lips? He's tried. <laughs> and, and what happened? Um, no, he has tried. I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. He kisses, we kiss each other, you know, on the side of the face. Okay. Um, and what about women? What is, I, I'm trying to understand what the customary greeting you observe women as. I think you said kiss on the cheek, yes. right? Yes, if, 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 he, he if he knows them. If he knows them. And if he doesn't know them? I mean, I, I've seen him just be, you know, polite. And by polite, what kind of physical contact is he having with women? Shake hands. Okay. You know, maybe a hand on the shoulder or something like that if he's consoling somebody. It depends. Other than members of your family, have you seen Governor Cuomo kiss a woman on the lips? Yes. Um, other than a, a Miss Lee, have you seen Governor Cuomo kiss a woman on the lips? Yes. Who? His, the, the various women who have been in his life um, over the years. When you say the various women who have been in his life, are you talking about girlfriends? Girlfriends, wife. Have you ever seen him kiss a member of his staff on the lips? No. Have you ever heard about him kissing a member of his staff on the lips? Yes. What did you hear about that? What's been in the media about the allegations? Prior to December of 2020, had you heard about the governor kissing members of staff on the lips? No. Um, you said that um, over the course of Governor Cuomo's life, he has had various women in his life, girlfriends or, or wives. Um, are you aware of him ever having a consensual relationship with a member of his staff? No. Um, are you aware of allegations that the governor had a consensual relationship with a member of his staff? No. Um, are you aware of allegations that the governor... Yes. Okay. Um, and what do you know about that? Just what you just told me. And how did you come to know about that allegation? I saw it online. And the person that um, we're referring to, who, to your knowledge, is it? Okay. <clears throat> um, before you saw the article online, did you speak to anybody about there being a potential article about uh, being in close physical contact with the governor? Yes. Who did you speak to? Anyone else? I believe Josh Vlasto. What prompted that communication with She reached out to you? Yes. And tell us what you discussed. That this was coming out and her not being happy about it and her asking what it would, how it would play. This was on a phone call? Yes. Uh, were, was Mr. Vlasto on this phone call as well? I think so. Or I had had separate conversations with, no, I, I think he was on the phone call. I may have had separate conversations but I remember him being part of the conversation. Okay, um, and tell us what you remember about what Mr. Vlasto said. He laughed it off. During that conversation, did, was there any discussion about whether he in fact had a relationship with Governor Cuomo? No. You didn't ask her that? No. Mr. Vlasto didn't ask her that? I don't remember. Um, do you remember whether she described her relationship with Governor Cuomo during that conversation? No, I've never heard her describe having a relationship with my brother. Um, not, ha not having a, I'm not saying she described having a sexual relationship. Let me, let me ask a better question. Oh, sure. During that conversation between you and Mr. Vlasto, did she talk at all about how she characterized her relationship with Governor Cuomo? Only to express frustration that it was gonna, this was going to be portrayed to mean that she had a uh, romantic relationship 
with my brother. And she d denied that is what yes. you're saying. What else did she say about the relationship? That's all I remember. What did you say on the call? <sighs> that people are going to see what they want to see. Anything else you said on the call? Not, not that I can remember. Did you ever discuss with the governor the article uh, relating to? Not that I specifically remember. Generally? Not that I remember. Have you ever spoken to Governor Cuomo about his relationship with? Yes. And tell us about that. Um, <clears throat> he has had one of his main people for a long time. So over the years, um, we have discussed, uh, you know, her, her value to him. Um, So obviously, um, that was part of the dynamic there. And when that, uh, I think it was, I think, um, came out with that, and I don't know who else picked it up, but I mean, when that came out, I remember him saying that, you know, this was unfortunate, and he felt badly for her to be put in that position. Did you ever discuss with Governor Cuomo whether he had a consensual sexual relationship? No, not in that way. I never <clears throat> confronted my brother or asked him about it. I mean, he, he, I've heard him say that he didn't like that suggestion. And did you take that to mean it wasn't true? Yes. Um, have you ever heard Governor Cuomo comment on appearance? Yes. And what has, have you heard him say? Flattering things. Such as? About how, what, what she was wearing or how she looked in that particular moment. Can you give me an example? I remember we were at something it would be something about how, you know, what a nice dress, or here she is, you know, look how beautiful she looks tonight, or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, what about behind her back? <clears throat> Have you ever heard him comment on her appearance behind her, not in front of her? N not that I've, uh, not that I can recall. Have you ever heard him make comments of a sexual nature or sexual jokes in front of Ms. Yes. And tell us about that. Just, you know, whatever he was joking with me about, if she was there, he would joke about it. Not about her, necessarily, but she would be present. Can you give me an example? Uh, if he was teasing me, I mean, I guess this would count. If he were teasing me about, um, you know, uh, about me or some joke he was making about me, um, about, uh, let's say, uh, being emotional, which is somewhat of a consistent theme for him where I'm involved. Um, and she were there, she would be present or even part of the joke. Uh, um, my question was jokes of a sexual nature. No. I'm trying to understand how that connects to jokes of a sexual nature. No, I mean, to me, it's like, you know, that I'm a, a, Emotional. I'm so emotional because, you know, that's like a, being effeminate, you know, in, in his tough guy world. I see. You're, so you're acting like a girl. That's the joke. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, behind, not in front of me, have you ever heard him make comments or jokes of a sexual nature about her? No. Um, you referred just a few moments ago to, uh, you thought it was a, right? Can you turn to tab five in your binder? Why don't you just flip through the pages?
Okay. Okay. Um, we'll mark this as the next exhibit. Is this the article that you were referring to a few moments ago? Yes. Okay. And why don't you turn to um, tab four of this binder? We'll mark this as the next exhibit. And you take a moment to look at it and then. Is the type too small, Mr. Coleman? No, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm okay. Okay. Um, I'll just make a suggestion as we go forward, correct, that perhaps when we look at emails, you might want to start from the end and read forward. Um, but are you ready? Thank you. Um, have you seen this email before? Um, no, not that I can remember. Um, do you remember being asked to comment on uh, response uh, to the article? I remember it in the conversation that I had with her. You remember discussing her response in the conversation you had with her and perhaps with Mr. Vlasto? Yes. Okay, and tell us about what you discussed um, with her response to the article. That people are going to see what they want to see. Um, other than that, did you say anything else? I was listening. Um, did you talk about what she might say in response? I was listening to what they were going to put out. But again, my feeling is you can say what you want. People are going to believe what they want to believe. Do you recall being um, read uh, in su some or in substance uh, the statement that's reflected in this email? No, I don't. How long did the call with and Mr. Vlasto last? Minutes. After that call with Mr. Vlasto, did you speak to anybody about um, the article? The article. Yes. Uh, various people who would ask me about it, um, got attention. Okay, and who are those people? Friends, colleagues, random people on the street. Um, and did you have a standard response to people who inquired? No. But a lot of my life is about tolerating what people want to say to me. Um, I know you told us you spoke to Governor Cuomo generally about the article. Is there anyone else um, in the executive chamber that you spoke to about the article? I don't remember it. N no. I don't remember it being a particular point of concern. Okay. Um, have you spoken to anyone else in the executive chamber about allegations that consensual sexual relationship with the governor? I don't remember that being a specific topic for me with somebody. Have you ever become aware of allegations that the governor has a consensual sexual relationship with other members of the executive chamber staff? No. Okay. We've been going for about um, an hour and 20 minutes. Would you like to take a break? Do you want to no. take a break? Okay. I don't want to, uh, if anybody wants to take a I'm okay. Um, but. Oops. You're the witness. You're in charge. Um, prior to June of 2020, were you aware of any allegations of sexual harassment against the governor? No. Um, had you ever talked to the governor about behavior that he had regretted or felt bad about? No. Even uh, bullying behavior. Had you ever talked to the governor prior to June 2020 about bullying? Not that I can recall specifically. Yeah. And prior to June of 2020, did you ever talk to any member of your family about concerns about the way Governor Cuomo interacted with his staff? No. Not that I recall. Um, and prior to June of 2020, did you ever talk to any member of your family about allegations of sexual harassment against Governor Cuomo? No. Or inappropriate conduct with women? No. Do you know Karen Hinton? I do. Okay. How do you know Ms. Hinton? From her work with Andrew. Have you actually met Ms. Hinton? Yes. How many times? Several. And what were those occasions? Work related. Would you say you're friends with her, friendly with her? I'm not. I, I, there's no, there's nothing. I, I, I don't really know her. Okay. 
Um, when was the last time you think you might have met her or seen her? Years and years ago. Um, prior to June of 2020, did you ever discuss with Governor Cuomo his relationship with Ms. Hinton? Not specifically. Generally? Just that she was part of the team and married to um, uh, another member of the team. Um, I can't... Uh, Howard Glazer. Did you ever talk prior to June of 2020, did you ever talk to Governor Cuomo about any concerns he had about his interactions with Ms. Hinton? No. Um, do you know who Gareth Rhodes is? I know the name. I know that he has something to do with the team. I don't know him personally. And I take it then if I ask if you were at Mr. Rhodes's wedding, the answer is no. I was not. Um, in the summer of 2020, did you ever discuss with Governor Cuomo uh, a woman by the name of Charlotte Bennett? Never. In the summer of 2020, or prior to December of 2020, did you discuss with any member of the executive chamber staff Charlotte Bennett? Never. Prior to December of 2020, did you ever discuss with Governor Cuomo any issues he had relating to junior women on his staff? No. Governor. Yeah. You have a question? Yeah, gonna... Oh, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's okay, please. <laughs> um, prior to December of 2020, did you ever hear from either the governor or a member of his staff about any women who had asked to be transferred out of the chamber? No, never. Um, Prior to December of 2020, did Governor Cuomo ever tell you a member of his staff was a sexual assault survivor? Never. Did the governor ever discuss with you prior to December of 2020 protocols for staffing him? Protocols for staffing him? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Good question. Um, do you have any understanding of uh, how the governor uh, chooses to deal with meetings in his office in terms of whether the door is open or closed? No. Did you have any understanding of whether the governor has a policy about being alone uh, with junior members of his staff in his office? No. Has anyone in the executive chamber ever talked to you? When I say protocol, that's what I mean. Has any member of the governor's staff ever talked to you about those kinds of protocols? No. But if I may. Of course. Uh, uh, just for your general consumption. I have very little to do with my brother's administration, his team, uh, planning. Uh, even in this, I have been a satellite on it um, there for my brother. So I don't mean to come off like I'm clueless. I just, I am because it's not my world. I don't work there. I've never worked there. Um, I've never been part of his campaigns. So that, that's why. If, that's, what, that's why there's a consistency to me not being aware of any of it. Great. Um, there, thank you for that context. It's actually quite helpful to understand how you view your, your relationship with um, the chamber. Um, I you, have no relationship with the chamber. When you said satellite, what did you mean by that? He's my brother. And if I can help my brother, I do. If he wants me to hear something, I will. If he wants me to weigh in on something, I'll try. What about if Melissa DeRosa wants you to weigh in? It's got to be coming from him. And uh, if it comes from Ms. DeRosa, do you check and make sure it's coming from the governor? Depends. I mean, th that's, I've never been suspicious that Melissa DeRosa was asking me to do something that had nothing to do with my brother or something like that. And so do you assume that if it's coming from Ms. DeRosa, your, your brother has asked you to be involved? Usually. Are there occasions in which that, that didn't happen? Not that I'm aware. Mm -hmm. Other than the, the parties that you've talked about, did you ever visit your brother at the executive mansion? Um, yes. And on any of the times you've visited at the mansion, has he been doing work? Yes. I feel like he's working almost all of the time. 
And on any of those occasions, did he have other staff, did he have executive staff members with him um, to assist him in the work he was doing? Not that I remember. Um, well, the last time I went to see him, um, Melissa DeRosa stopped by to say hello to me and to him in the morning. And I think that's it, other than the staff that works at the mansion. Have there been any occasions where he's had anyone there to, you know, take dictation or edit documents, that sort of work? Not that I've seen. Um, have you ever, other than Miss Fenton, have you ever met any of the governor's executive assistants? Not that I can remember. I've never even been to his New York office, I don't think. Have you been to his Albany office? I think I was there very early on when he was first elected. Are you uh, shifting to December of 2020? Um, are you aware that a woman by the name of Lindsay Boylan tweeted uh, about Governor Cuomo? I am. Um, do you know Lindsay Boylan? No. Never met her? I don't think so. Um, how did you first become aware that Ms. Boylan had tweeted about Governor Cuomo? I think that it was a close call between somebody in the media telling me or uh, Melissa or Josh Blasto. All of them, that all happened. And uh, when you say that all happened, meaning you heard about it in the media and you heard about it from Ms. DeRosa and Mr. Vlasto. And is that yes? Yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. And um, was that in December of 2020? Yes. Okay. And um, when I say uh, Ms. Boylan's tweets, what do you remember the tweets saying? I just remember the gist. And what was the gist? That she was accusing Andrew of inappropriate conduct. Um, do you recall hearing that Ms. Boylan had tweeted that the governor had sexually harassed her? Yes. I don't know if that's what I heard in the first instance or when Ms. Boylan asserted that later. Um, by later, do you mean, were you aware that Ms. Boylan had several tweets in relation to Governor Cuomo? Yes, and an article. Okay. And were you following the tweets in real time? No. I don't, you... I don't believe that I follow Ms. Boylan. Okay. That doesn't mean I couldn't be following the tweets. But no, I was, I was not. Can we look at the tweets and see which are the, the tweets that you recall um, which coming aware to you. So let's start with tab six. We'll mark this as the next exhibit. Okay. Okay. So this is a tweet um, on December 5th, 2020, where an individual by the name of Jerry tweeted, name the worst job you've ever had. Um, and Ms. Boylan tweeted, among other things, most toxic team environment working for at New York Gov Cuomo. Do you see that? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember seeing this tweet? No, ma'am. Do you remember hearing about this tweet? Not specifically. Okay. Um, why don't we look at the next tweet? So turn to tab seven, and we'll mark this as the next exhibit. This is a series of tweets um, from Ms. Boylan that occurred on December 8th of 2020. Um, and among other things, she says, responding to the news world finally waking up about the whispers they have heard of, about at New York Gov Cuomo over the years, and she goes on. Do you recall seeing these tweets? Not specifically. Generally? I remember being made aware of what the thread was about. Okay. Can you point in time to when you first became aware of Ms. Boylan's tweets? Not specifically, but I would suspect it was very uh, close to when they were happening. And, and do you remember it being before she tweeted about sexual harassment, or was it not until she tweeted about sexual harassment? I'm not sure. Okay. 
Um, why don't we flip to tab eight? This is the, we'll mark this as the next exhibit. This is a series of tweets from Ms. Boylan um, on December 12th, where she says, among other things, there are fewer things more scary than giving this man who exists without ethics even more control. Do you remember seeing this tweet? Um, no, not specifically. Okay. Do you remember um, discussing this tweet with anyone, including the fact that she was tweeting about Governor Cuomo potentially being uh, a pick for Mr. President Biden's attorney general? No. We turn to tab nine. We'll mark this as the next tweet. Um, this is a tweet from December 13th, 2020 from Ms. Boylan. And she says, my first experience of workplace sexual harassment was when my mom got her first real job for office after graduating from college when I was in high school. And she goes on and says, yes, at New York, Governor Cuomo sexually harassed me for years. Do you remember seeing this tweet? No, not specifically. Do you remember hearing about this tweet? Yes. OK. And tell us about um, uh, your conversation, or I think you said you had a communication with Mr. Rosa about these tweets, right? Yes. And tell us about that communication. I mean, I remember it generally being about um, her not believing this. And that they were hoping that it wouldn't get a lot of traction. What form of communication were you having with Mr. Rosa? I, I remember a phone call. Was she the only person on the phone? I'm not sure. If I, I think that it was Melissa DeRosa, Josh Velasto, and me. But I may have had calls with each. In December of 2020, how often were you in communication with Ms. DeRosa? It became more frequent. Over the course of December? Yes. OK, why don't you walk us through the December timeline as you remember it? I don't have a great um, chronology on this. Mm -hmm. I just know that as the situation started to uh, accelerate. My brother asked me to be in the loop. And so from time to time, I would be contacted by Melissa or another member more frequently. Let's start with the governor. You said he asked you to be in the loop. What form of communication did that happen in? Phone call. What else was said in that phone call? There were many phone calls, Counselor. Um, the, the, the general was, um, I need your help. I'm sorry uh, that you're getting pulled into this kind of thing. And uh, if you can be available, please be available. When you say there were many phone calls over the December 2020 time period, you're saying with the governor? Yes. Okay. How many phone calls do you think you had with the governor over the course of December 2020? I don't know. Um, do you keep your phone records? Uh, no. In any of those conversations, it sounds like if I ask you to go through them chronologically, you're not able to do that. Is that right? Yes, it would be difficult. Okay, so why don't you take me through the substance? What was Governor Cuomo telling you about the allegations that had been made against him by Lindsey Boylan? That they didn't happen. That Lindsey Boylan had it out for him. And that's what this was about. Anything else you remember? That he never harassed her or touched her in any inappropriate way. Uh, 
Let's try to unpack this a little bit, if you can uh, be more specific in your memory. When the governor told you it didn't happen, what do you remember him saying didn't happen? In December of 2020. That he had never harassed or touched in any inappropriate way. Did you discuss with the governor whether he had touched Ms. Boylan at all? No. Did you discuss any of the governor's interactions with Ms. Boylan with the governor? No, not specifically. Generally? Just to understand what was going on here. What was this about? Were you in any phone conversations with him uh, in which he talked about um, his relationship with her? No. What it was like to work with her? No, other than his description of what didn't happen. Did he talk to you about how she got hired? No. Did he talk to you about how she left the executive chamber? Maybe. Okay. What do you remember about that? That there was an issue uh, in the office that involved Ms. Boylan and people who were under her. Um, but I didn't really probe it. Like, it, it wasn't really relevant to me. Why wasn't it relevant? Because what I'm worried about is my brother and what this means for my family. And I'm not covering it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, yeah, the, the idea that I could ever report on my brother has always been an absurdity to me. Um, it's never been my intention. It's never been my practice. And so, look, this was just, you know, just wanted to be able to help my brother. That's it. Did he tell you um, what the issue was with, uh, I think you said it was people that were under her? No, I don't remember him telling me. Okay. Um, you said that... Governor Cuomo said that Lindsey Boylan uh, had it out for him. Yes. What did he say about that? He believes that Ms. Boylan's allegations and all that have followed are somehow connected to political animus against him and people who are looking to play to opportunity and advantage to take him down. When you say the governor has expressed a few that Ms. Boylan's allegations and all that have followed are part of that effort, what, do you, what did you understand him to mean by all that has followed? Everything. Meaning all the other complainants who have come forward? Yes. Including Charlotte Bennett? Yes. That's, not, that's not fair to him. I don't remember that being specifically said, but that is a consistent theme for him about what this is about. Every time I've asked him, this is the answer that I get. And those political, uh, scroll back. Um, you said it's are somehow connected to political animus against him and people who are looking to play on an opportunity. Who are the people he's referring to? In this instance, uh, Lindsey Boylan. Do you ever have any conversations um, with the governor about who those other people might be that are looking to take advantage of this opportunity? Yes. Who are, and what were those conversations? That he believes that he has, if not political enemies, people who uh, have a political interest in seeing him damaged. Are there specific people that you and he discussed in connection with the allegations of sexual harassment? Um, say it again. Are there specific people that you and the governor discussed as having that political animus in connection with the allegations of sexual harassment against the governor? Yes. Who? Boylan. Uh, Lindsay, Lindsay Boylan. Um, Karen Hinton. Um, and, uh, and other people involved. Can, who are the other people? Um, Andrew believes that there are members of the legislature, 
who are very happy to see him or will gain or benefit from him being in a situation. And, you know, that's what it is for him. There's a universe of possibility about people being out to get him. you had with Governor Cuomo in December, did he ever tell you that he was aware that Charlotte Bennett had raised concerns about interactions with him that made her uncomfortable back in June of 2020? I never heard that until the allegations came out. So. Did Melissa DeRosa ever tell you in December 2020 that she knew back in June or July of 2020 that Charlotte Bennett had raised concerns about interactions with the governor that made Ms. Bennett uncomfortable? I don't know. I don't remember if I learned about that after I learned about it, you know, so that I, I already knew and it was being discussed, or that I was told about it in, it, in advance. I, I don't remember. Do you recall any discussion with your brother or uh, Mr. Rosa when you're talking about Ms. Boylan's allegations where there was discussion about there are other women who've been uncomfortable in interactions with the government. No, not, not the way uh, that you're explaining. And um, when the governor talked about uh, there being a political animus or motive behind this, did he include Charlotte Bennett in that as well? Not that I remember. Did he say anything about how he could explain Charlotte Bennett? Yes. He said a lot, Council. Probably not covered, but what, uh, what did he say? Can we, okay, should we Mr. Kim, okay. can you wait? <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. okay. Is there anything else that you want to get to before we'll take a break? And it'll, it'll be fast. Why don't we take a break? Think, we, let's go off the record. Okay, stand by. Time is 1043 a.m. This Media One. Thank you. Why don't we take 10 minutes? Time now is 10.58 a.m. This begins meeting the two on the record. Mr. Cuomo, before the break, we were talking about conversations you had with Governor Cuomo in December of 2020 about the allegations of sexual harassment um, Ms. Boylan had made. You told us you also had conversations with Melissa DeRosa and Josh Vlasto about those allegations. Can you tell us about the substance of your conversations with Ms. DeRosa and Mr. Vlasto? I remember Melissa DeRosa dismissing the allegations as untrue. I remember Josh Vlasto dismissing the allegations as uh, untrue. Anything else you remember about your conversations with Mr. DeRosa and Mr. Vlasto in December of 2020? Not by date. Forget about chronology, sort of just substance-wise, what do you remember? Um, I remember that Josh Vlasto, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not saying this as a matter of fact, I believe he knew Lindsay Boylan uh, before she worked for the governor and that he was very upset by this, that he felt that she was out to hurt people in the administration. She had an ax to grind. Did Mr. Vlasto explain why he thought Ms. Boylan had an ax to grind or was out to hurt people in the administration? Generally, I got the sense that there had been trouble um, caused by Ms. Boylan and that this was an extension of that. What did you understand was the trouble that had been caused by Ms. Boylan? I wasn't interested 
specifically. To me, it was just, what, what is this going to mean for my brother, you know, and my family? You know, mm -hmm. I didn't have a curiosity mm -hmm. about things that didn't, you know, backstory. I, you know. Um, even, even if you didn't ask or you weren't curious about the backstory, did Mr. Vlasto or Mr. Rose explain what, what the trouble was? Not that I specifically recall. What do you remember Mr. Vlasto or Mr. Rosa discussing about how to respond to Ms. Boylan's allegations? I don't remember either of them making strategy points about here's what should be done or not be done. I wasn't part of conversations like that very often. So for me, the conversation was about what this is and what they wanted me to know about it. Were you a part of any conversations in, wh what, in which they discussed Governor Cuomo publicly responding to Ms. Boylan's allegations? Yes. In December of 2020? I think so. I think so. Again, you know, take it for what it's worth. Um, when you were asking me about uh, June and uh, not you, June, the, about the timing of June, you know, I was coming off COVID. Um, I talk about this publicly to kind of help motivate people to talk about it. I know people are trying to come up with reasons to tell you them. You can ask me whatever you want, okay? And my, I'm going to answer whatever you want. I don't know if it's just I got a fire hose in my face on a regular basis of different things or that it is, you know, the I mean, once we get into the meat of the matters here, you know, it was just a deluge of stuff, you know, June, December, January, February. Uh, when I went back and reviewed, a lot of these dates are new to me in terms of contextualizing it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean. Um, I don't remember if it was in December right proximate to when I was told about the tweets that I started to being looped in. My assumption is, yes, that whenever they started talking about it, they started to loop me in uh, to talking about it. And... I absolutely uh, said yes to my brother. I was willing to listen to whatever he wanted me to. Um, putting aside chronology, and I'm going to do my best to put aside chronology, um, recognizing what you just said today. But just so you understand, I'm not busting your chops to make you give me specific Totally answers. understand. We'll get some documents and maybe okay. it'll help refresh your chronology a little bit. But um, what do you remember being discussed about the governor's first response to Ms. Boylan's allegations of sexual harassment? The primary discussion, as I remember it, was whether or not to respond. And fill us in on how those conversations went. I just remember there being a division of significance to different people on the various calls um, about whether or not responding was the right thing or not. And I remember Andrew very much wanting to respond. Okay. And tell us about what you remember Governor Cuomo saying about wanting to respond to Ms. Boylan's allegations. Uh, not true. Um, and that he should get in front of it. And what were the other views expressed? If you get in front of it, then you continue it. Um, was, you know, I guess the antipodal viewpoint. And who expressed that view? <sighs> I was asked, I'm pretty sure by Andrew, and I don't remember if it was like before a conversation 
or not, but I said to him, and I said consistently all the way through, you tell the truth and you tell it now. Um, and I remember other people being more deliberative about it. What was Melissa DeRosa's view in responding to Lindsay Boylan's allegations of sexual harassment against the governor? I don't remember her specific take on what to say or how to say it early on, um, other than the conversation that I had had with her, or conversations about her saying this wasn't true and mm -hmm. um, putting this on Lindsay Boylan and having animus. Did you have any discussions um, with Mr. Rosa about uh, Ms. Boylan's personnel file and whether it should be provided to the press? Personnel file? Yes. Meaning like what had happened with her when she was there? Well, were you involved in any discussions about Ms. Boylan's personnel file? Not that I can recall. Were you involved in any discussions about informing the press about what had happened with Ms. Boylan while she had been a chamber employee, meaning the trouble from those underneath her? No, not about what to do with what had happened with her when she was at the chamber. Okay. I didn't really know. Did you ever become aware that the chamber had provided the press with Ms. Boylan's, what was referred to as Ms. Boylan's personnel file? I don't know that the chamber provided it to the press. Okay. You're aware it has been provided to the press. I remember reading that there was, uh, I remember reading in the press mm -hmm. that Lindsay Boylan had sent texts um, or messages of some kind to people who were in the administration expressing animus and an intent to come after them. Okay, putting aside the, the texts, do you have any knowledge about the provision of information relating to complaints that had been made about Ms. Boylan's behavior while she was an executive chamber employee being provided to the press? No, ma'am. You were never involved in any discussions with anyone about who might have provided that information to the press? No. Again, I don't know that the executive chamber did provide um, personnel files to media. I, I don't know that. Were you aware um, of a draft letter that was prepared regarding Ms. Boylan and her allegations of sexual harassment and her time at the executive chamber? I don't remember a draft about Lindsay Boylan specifically. You remember any discussions about preparing a draft of an op-ed or a letter that would discuss Ms. Boylan? Ms. Boylan specifically, no, but yes is the answer to the question generally. I remember many, um, but not specific to Ms. Boyland, I don't. Do you remember any discussions with Governor Cuomo about having people write an op-ed about Lindsay Boylan? No, I don't. I don't recall that. In the December time period, I know you don't have a good handle on the chronology, but um, were you aware of any efforts by the executive chamber to reach out to former members of the executive chamber staff? No, no. I wasn't part of any, any effort like that. Were you aware of any effort like that? No. Were you involved in any conversations with the governor, Mr. Rosa, or Mr. Vlasto, where it became clear that they were getting information from former members of the executive chamber staff? I don't remember that specifically being a dynamic. Were you aware of any effort to determine whether there might be any other potential complainants who would have allegations against Governor Cuomo? No. My experience was being asked on an on and off basis about whether it was true that there were more complainants. And who was asking you that? Various members of, of the, the, the team, I guess you'd call it. Um, when you say the team, you're talking about members of the executive chamber staff? No. You know, Steve Cohen's not a member of the executive chamber staff anymore. Josh Flasto's not a member of the executive chamber staff anymore. Um, Pollock, I don't think, ever was. Liz Smith is not anywhere. I mean, you know all these things. But, I mean, there, you know, obviously, I don't want to mislead you to think that it was only the people who work for the governor who, was, who were talking to him at this time. 
it was an expanding circle of people around him. And that, that group of people or that expanding group of people, was there ever any discussion that you became aware of that they were going to reach out to former members of the executive chamber staff to see if anyone might have a concern about their interactions with Governor Cuomo? I don't remember that being a focus of their energy. Even if it wasn't a focus, did that come up? N not that I recall. It may have, but I, I don't recall being a part of anything like that. Are you aware of a woman named Caitlin who has made allegations against Governor Cuomo? Yes. When was the first time you heard or were part of any discussions about Caitlin? When the allegation was made. Meaning you either saw the article or there was a discussion about a potential article? Yes. Um, why don't we turn to just staying with Lindsay Boylan for a few more moments, tab 24. Oh, sorry, I apologize. It's not tab 24. It's tab 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll mark this as the next exhibit. Um, do you recognize this as the medium piece Miss Boylan published regarding her experiences with Governor Cuomo? No, because I don't remember ever seeing it, um, you know, in this layout, but that's, you know, I see her name there and I, I see what the headline is. Why don't you page through the substance real quick? Mm -hmm. Yes, I recognize that that's what this is. Okay, and um, how did this first come to your attention? I think that I was either told by people in the media or by someone uh, in the governor's ambit of this development. Um, before you were told, were you, uh, did you have any advanced knowledge that this might be happening? Ms. Not Boylan? that I recall. I apologize, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Any knowledge that Ms. Boylan might be um, publishing more specifics of her interactions with the governor? No, I was surprised by this. Um, were you at the executive mansion the day this piece was published? I don't think so. Um, so after this is published, what, what happens next from your perspective? I don't remember anything happening next. Did you talk to anyone about the article? Yes. Who did you talk to about it? Um, various people. It was uh, an item of high interest. Um, did you, were you part of group conversations with members of the executive chamber staff and consultants to the executive chamber yes. about Lindsay Boylan's medium piece? I don't know if it was about specifically this piece, but yes. About Lindsay Boylan? Yes. Okay, and tell us about those, the substance of those communications. That this had um, raised the stakes and that there was shock on their part uh, that the allegation had been made. Um, was there any discussion about whether any of the contents of Ms. Lindsay Boylan's allegations were true? No. The, the suggestion was the opposite. And by suggestion, what do you mean? That Lindsey Boylan suggesting that the governor had forced her to kiss him was not true. Who told you that it was not true? Andrew. My, my brother told me. Josh Flasto says he didn't believe it. Um, he became more... Uh, detailed in his doubts about her credibility and her acting in anything approximating good faith. And that he had regret because, and again, I could be wrong, but, my, but I remember him feeling like he somehow 
was connected to how she got hired or something like that, that he, he knew her or something like that, and that he felt guilty that somebody that he had brought in, you know, um, had caused this situation. Um, I remember Melissa also expressing disbelief. You said Mr. Vlasto um, was more detailed in his doubts. What did he detail? That he did not trust Lindsey Boylan's credibility, good faith. Did he explain why? Not exactly. And generally? He said that he was just commenting that this was more than wrong. Um, wasn't about her misunderstanding the situation. Wasn't about anything that had ever happened. It was about her launching an attack and him believing that she was not tethered to reality. And you said Mr. Rosa expressed disbelief. Yes. Um, and explain, what did Mr. Rosa say? This didn't happen. I'm sorry. That's okay. What did she say to your recollection? No way this happened. And the this that's being referred to, what was the this? The harassment, the forced uh, kissing. Um, was there any discussion about Ms. Boylan's allegation that the governor gave her a tour of the executive mansion? No, I don't understand that to be an allegation. Was there any discussion about Ms. Al Ms. Boylan's allegation that the governor had made uh, comments about a cigar box he had received from President Clinton? Not that I can recall. Was there any discussion about Ms. Boylan saying the governor had compared her to one of his ex-girlfriends? Not that I can recall. Was there any discussion about Ms. Boylan's allegation uh, that the governor had given her a rose on Valentine's Day? No. Was there any discussion that Ms. Boylan had received a signed photograph of the governor on her desk shortly after receiving the Valentine's Day rose? Not that I can recall. But also, just to be, I don't remember being in any conversation where that was said. I'm not saying it was never said. I, I can't speak for conversations that they had, which happened all the time, that I was not included in, uh, or I was only included in for part of the time. So. Totally understand. I'm just looking for your memory, in part trying to understand what the this is that you understood people were expressing disbelief about. Um, was there any discussion about Ms. Boylan's allegation that the governor had made a comment about playing strip poker? Not that I can recall. I don't remember anybody validating anything that Lindsay Boylan said. But other than the kiss, you don't remember them discussing any of the allegations? No, not specifically. Okay. And when the kiss was discussed, you said they, that both the governor, the governor denied that he had forcibly kissed Miss Boylan. Did the governor ever say he had kissed her not forcibly? No. Were you part of any conversation in which any of the governor's physical interactions with Miss Boylan were discussed? Maybe, uh, in terms of how his customary greetings or whatever may have been an aspect of what Boylan was talking about, and I remember that being rejected heavily. I may have even suggested it at some point. I didn't talk so much uh, early on. And I may have said, you know, is the, you know I remember thinking at least, you know, could she have gotten something wrong? I mean, you know, people can misconstrue things all the time in good faith. And I remember it just being dismissed out of hand that any of this was about confusion or not understanding something as it was intended. That this was all intentional. She was making it up and she was doing it to hurt Andrew. And nobody was surprised that she was doing that. So the entire premise of the discussion was she had made everything up. Yes. Uh -huh, so, um, are you aware of someone by the name of 
Do you know someone by the name of Lisa Shields? Yes. Who is she? Lisa Shields is somebody who worked at ABC News, where I worked for many years. She dated my brother, and she is a friend uh, once removed. I've known her many years. By once removed, I mean she's very good friends with a very good friend of mine. And did you ever become aware that one of the allegations... I'm listening, Counselor. I'm sorry. Did you ever become aware that one of the allegations that Lindsey Boylan made was that uh, the governor had said, she, Lindsey Boylan, looks like Lisa Shields? I'm aware that that has been said. I don't remember being part of a conversation about it or, you know, I, I, so I'm aware of it, but I don't remember having conversations about it or that. I don't remember where I heard it, but yes, I am familiar with that. Did you ever talk to the governor about that? Not that I can recall. Did you ever ask him, did you say that? Not that I can recall specifically. Do you know what Lindsey Boylan looks like? Just from photos. I don't think I've ever met her in person. But from photos, does she look like Lisa Shields? I don't know. Um, you've told us what you recall uh, the governor saying about Ms. Boylan, um, Mr. Velasco, and Ms. DeRosa. Do you recall anything anyone else said uh, that was part of the team about Ms. Boylan? Not individually. Um, collectively? I just remember that there was abject rejection of what Lindsay Boylan was putting out, that there was a general feeling that she was not coming in good faith and that this was designed to hurt the administration. Were you part of any conversations about doing opposition research on Ms. Boylan or research on Ms. Boylan? No, never. Um, were you part of any conversations in which her campaign contributors were discussed? No, not that I recall. Were you part of any conversations in which um, mem it was clear that members of her staff had been spoken to? No. Her campaign staff, I mean. No. Okay. Not that I can recall. Jen, okay. Please. Did your brother, the governor, discuss with you why he was looping in people like Steve Cohen and Josh Flasto, who no longer worked in the administration? No. Not specifically. Did he speak to you generally about that? No. Did you have any understanding as to why he was including people like Steve Cohen and Josh Vlasta, who no longer worked in the administration? Yes. What was your understanding? They are still advisors of his. And what do you understand he, that they advise him about other than these allegations? Everything. Everything and anything. There is a good chance that the governor will reach out to one or both of them. Is there anyone else that falls into that category that the governor reaches out to about everything as an advisor who's not an employee of the uh, executive chamber? No, not that I can think of. Did you ever have any discussion with the governor about whether it was appropriate to share non-public information about state operations with people that no longer worked for the chamber? No. Um, did you have any discussions with the governor about um, uh, Linda Lacewell's role? Her role? Her role with respect to things going on within the executive chamber. No, ma'am. Did you understand that at the time of these allegations, Ms. Lacewell no longer worked in the executive chamber? I don't think so. Okay, Jen. With respect to Ms. Boylan, were you part of any conversations in which um, it was discussed that she had called the governor handsome? No. That she had said she loved the governor? No. Um, Not that I recall. Okay. Um, tell us what you remember about um, the response to Ms. Boylan's Medium Post. What was discussed? I remember there being a division about whether or not to respond. 
Is this the division you spoke of earlier, where you were in the f in, uh, in favor of uh, tell the truth and tell it now? Yes, counsel. Do you remember at this time who was in which bucket? I remember I was in the you tell the truth and you tell it now bucket. Um, and my brother, I believe, accepted that advice. Uh, well, I, I don't think he needed it. I, I think that that's where his head was also. Um, and there were others who were more circumspect about the risks of weighing in on something in terms of the energy that that would give the story in the media. And do you recall what the outcome of those discussions were with respect to Lindsay Boylan's medium piece? No, and I don't even remember if there was a specific response to it. Do you remember any other conversations about Ms. Boylan that you participated in? Not specifically. When was the first time you, na you heard the name Charlotte Bennett? I'm not exactly sure, but I had never heard about Charlotte Bennett before this period. Why don't we hand you? Thank you. Okay. Counselors, do you have a, a binder over there that looks like this? No, we only have one. Okay. I have, a, I have a stack of them. That's why you don't have those. I'm hoarding them. Okay, so we're going to mark um, what is in this binder as the next exhibit. Mr. Cuomo, this is um, a printout um, of text messages between you and Ms. DeRosa. Can you see that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and they begin on um, February 27th the very first page. You see on February 27th, Mr. Yes, Rosa texts you a tweet from Jesse McKinley, a reporter um, from the New York Times. Um, in response to uh, that tweet, did you learn that the article was going to be about Ms. Bennett? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I knew who it was when I received this text. Okay. And tell us what, what you do remember about discussions about Charlotte Bennett with the governor. And there was a lot of discussion, obviously. Um, my interest was different than uh, the teams. For me, it was who is Charlotte Bennett? What is this account about? What is true and what isn't true? What did the governor tell you about who Charlotte Bennett is? He said she worked on the staff, that uh, she was um, on and off, you know, in, in contact with him. that she was part of like the, the love gov you know fanfare of all of the of uh, all the messages that he would get and all that and you know the, the people around him who would kind of monitor it that Charlotte Bennett was one of them I'm not saying that was her job I'm just saying he had mentioned that Anything else that uh, Governor Cuomo told you about who Ms. Bennett is? Not in terms of like her background or anything like that. Did Governor Cuomo ever tell you that Ms. Bennett was a sexual assault survivor? I definitely discovered that. I don't, I don't think my brother is the one who told me that. I think you said the next thing you were interested in is, is what is this? What's true and what's not? What did Governor Cuomo tell you was true and was not true about Ms. Bennett's allegations? My brother said that he never intended to do anything like what Charlotte Bennett uh, was alleging. 
and by do anything, would it? Andrew, my brother said that he never solicited affection or asked her out or made a move or anything like that. He never put his hands on her. He never did anything like that. What did he say to you or tell you about the allegations she made about things he said to her? That he never intended to in any way deceive or influence her the way that had been suggested, and he was very sorry that she felt that way, if she in fact did. Did Governor Cuomo acknowledge to you that he had said to Ms. Bennett the things she was alleging he said? Not specific comments. In general? Not that I recall. That they had discussed Charlotte Bennett and what she had survived and how that shaped her, and that she wanted to know from my brother what to do with it, what to do with the experience, and how it affected her life and her personal life. Did Governor Cuomo acknowledge to you he had said the things to Ms. Bennett that she alleged he had said to her? No. Did he deny to you that he had said the things to Ms. Bennett that she is alleging? He denied that he was trying to manipulate Charlotte Bennett the way that I believe is alleged. I understand that he denied having an intention to you. I'm asking, did he deny using the words that she says he used. Which words? Okay. So did the governor um, deny uh, to you telling her that he was lonely? No. Did he acknowledge that he did tell Miss Bennett he was lonely? No, not that I recall. Did the governor acknowledge that he had said to Miss Bennett he wanted to ride off on his motorcycle and take a woman into the mountains? No. Did he deny saying that? No. Did he acknowledge asking her about recent hookups? Say that again. Did the governor deny asking Ms. Bennett about recent hookups? No. I don't remember ever discussing any of these statements with him specifically. That's why I'm saying I don't remember him acknowledging them or denying them because I don't remember discussing them with him. Okay. And so then help me understand what was discussed. So I understand he denied the... In Tend, having an intent, right? You said he denied trying to manipulate her. Was the tenor of the discussion that the conversations Miss Bennett was describing had in fact occurred? The tenor of the conversation was, what were you doing talking to her about these things? Why did any of this happen? That was coming from me. Mm -hmm. And what did Governor Cuomo say in response? He thought he could help. thought he understood, he thought he was being helpful. So he didn't deny talking to her about the things? No. In any conversation that you were a part of, did Governor Cuomo deny talking to Ms. Bennett about the things she alleged they discussed? I don't remember it being, I don't remember it being couched that way, Counselor. I remember it not being a matter of fact, were these things said or not. It was about what the dynamic was. Why was this conversation happening? It wasn't about denying that Charlotte Bennett had said what had happened in her past um, or that Andrew discussed, with that, uh, discussed that with her often, um, but that the way in which it was discussed was intended to be helpful because of what he had lived through in his own life and what he knew about the lives of those around him and what he understands about this dynamic from being in this, you know, world in public space for four decades. But nothing that even approximates the idea of it being seductive or grooming. He was disgusted by that idea. 
Did the governor tell you he was trying to be helpful when he asked Ms. Bennett if she could find him a girlfriend? He never mentioned that he asked her to find him a girlfriend. What I was told was that Charlotte Bennett used to talk about culling that Love Gov parade and looking for women as a joke. Not that she ever meant it as any kind of actual solicitation or, you know, just to be clear. And who told you that Ms. Bennett had discussed culling the, I don't, actually, I need to understand, what is the, the Love Gov parade that you're talking about? Andrew, at some point, became a focus of national attention. And he started to get a lot of intention, a lot of praise, and a lot of playfulness about his personal life. Um, and messages would come in, emails, social media, of men, but you know, I believe mostly um, women, saying nice things about him. And it was my understanding that Charlotte Bennett thought that was very funny and that she would go through the messages and had said to him, hey, I'm going to find you a, a good woman in this here from this. That's what I was told. Who told you that? I don't remember specifically. I remember, I, I don't remember specifically. I, I, um, I, don't, I don't remember specifically. Do you remember being a part of a conversation in which someone reported on what Charlotte Bennett had told senior staff in the chamber about her conversations with the governor before she left? I don't know that I was part of a conversation, but I remember being told that Charlotte Bennett did go in and met with senior staff. Okay. And who told you that? I don't remember if someone told me or I was asked to listen in on a conversation where that was being discussed. Okay, and what do you remember about that conversation where Ms. Bennett's meetings with senior staff were discussed? Just that, that there had been meetings. And was the substance of those meetings relayed? Not that I recall. Did Governor Cuomo tell you he was trying to be helpful when he asked Ms. Bennett how old someone had to be for him to date her? I don't remember discussing him saying that. Did the governor tell you he was trying to be helpful when he told Miss Bennett she should put a tattoo she wanted to get on her chest or her butt? I don't remember ever discussing that with him. Did governor Cuomo tell you he was trying to be helpful to Miss Bennett when he called her Daisy Duke? I don't know that he ever said that. Did you ever discuss that with Governor Cuomo? No. Except to the extent that my brother told me he never engaged in conversation with her that he thought um, was inappropriate uh, or that was wrong. But I, don't, I didn't drill him like this about the specifics of what was said and why it was said. Did anyone in any of the conversations you were part of drill him like this? Not that I can recall, but again, there are a lot of conversations that I wasn't a part of. I'm not a great source for insight into the inner workings of the governor's team during this time. Right. I'm just asking whether you were part of any conversations no. in which anyone asked the governor whether he had in fact said to Ms. Bennett the things she was alleging he had said. I'm sorry, I jumped the question. That's okay. And no, I don't remember that. And so the premise of the, the, the conversations that you were a part of was that he may have said these things, but it was not his intention to make a move or solicit her? The second part of that is my understanding. Um, the what he said, what he didn't say, I, I don't remember being a part of any real detailed discussion about that. And what do you, I'm gonna move on to talking about the response, unless Ms. Clark. Just a few questions. Um, were you part of any discussions when they were talking about what Ms. Bennett shared with senior staffers earlier? Um, was there discussion that Ms. Bennett's specific allegations in terms of some of the conversation that was later reported was shared with the senior staffers months earlier? I don't remember picking up on that. Did anyone tell you or did you hear directly from any senior staff that had spoken to Ms. Bennett back 
um, earlier that they found her to be credible. I don't remember that being said or that she wasn't credible. I don't, I don't remember anybody saying that to me. And then I'm not going to scroll back to see your exact words, but I think the gist of what you said you're, you're, you were asking your brother was, how did this happen? Um, was that because when you heard the allegations, it struck you as something that was not appropriate in an employer-employee relationship? Yes. Um, and other than saying he, his intention was, was uh, as you described, did your, your brother say anything else about whether he thought it was appropriate for the workplace? No. Did the governor tell you whether he had similar conversations with any other employees? No, ma'am. Yeah, sorry. Just, and, and you had read the New York Times article, right, reporting on what Charlotte Bennett said? Um, I was probably aware of it, uh, Counselor. I don't know that I perused it or read every word of it. Did you watch her on CBS? Uh, no. I think I, I think I read the transcript. And so it's not, today's not the first time, today's not the first time you're hearing of, you know, some of the things that she said he said, right? Um, no. Counselor, I am aware of pretty much er everything I've been told. Maybe not everything, but again, my perspective here is no disrespect to any of the people putting forward allegations. This is my brother, and I'm trying to help my brother through a situation where he has told me he did nothing wrong. And that's it for me. How do I protect my family? How do I help protect him? Probably should have been thinking more about how I protect myself, uh, which just never occurred to me. And that was it. It wasn't this tactical, what do you do, what do you not do? You ask me a question, I'll give you an answer. You want my take on how something's playing? I'll tell you. Uh, but I'm not part of his team, and I wasn't part of any kind of manipulation of any kind. So for me, it was, you know, the way you guys would probably talk to your siblings about it, you know? Well, what is this? Did you do this? No, I didn't do this. Okay, well then, how did this happen? Why, why, why is Charlotte Bennett saying these things? Well, I thought that, you know, I was able to help, I was doing this. That was the conversation. So understanding your perspective um, as a brother, we're just trying to understand what you actually talked to him about okay. and didn't, and so, uh, knowing at the time some of the allegations that she was making from whatever source, New York Times or transcript of the CBS, uh, and him saying, I was just trying to be helpful, uh, the question is, did you ask him questions? Did you ever ask him, well, she's saying, um, uh, you said, uh, you know, I'm comfortable with anyone as young as 22. Did you say that? No. Okay. Did you ever ask him, how is that consistent with being helpful to a sex assault victim? No, not that I recall. Did that cross your mind? Yes. Okay. But you just didn't ask him? Not that I recall. Specific. Have you ever gotten an explanation from anyone how saying that I'm comfortable with anyone over 22 is helpful. I don't know that it was said. And people can say things and think that it's going to be taken one way, and it is not taken that way. And you can either think that's reasonable or unreasonable. My question was simply, have you ever heard an explanation given to you by anyone, not something you can come up with. Now. I've never heard Andrew own that he said that, that that's true, that that was actually said. But no one in your presence asked him, did you say that? Not in my presence. And you never asked him? I don't think I ever asked him that specifically, like about that comment.
Did you tell Governor Cuomo that it struck you that Ms. Bennett's uh, allegations, the conversations he had with Ms. Bennett were not appropriate in an employee-employer relationship? Ask me, did I? Did you tell Governor Cuomo, you, you told Ms. Clark a moment ago that you thought the discussions that Governor Cuomo had with Ms. Bennett were not appropriate in an employee-employer relationship. Did you tell Governor Cuomo that? Yes. What did he say? I understand. What, did, what specifically did you tell him? This was bad judgment. And shouldn't have happened. And all he said in response was, I understand? He was embarrassed. Did he say that? He didn't have to. What do you mean he didn't have to? I can tell how my brother feels about things and how he does. Um, I don't know your brother like you do, so you can help me understand how you could tell that he was embarrassed. 40 years of being his best friend, of knowing what he's taught me about how to be, about what I've seen him do with himself and how he carries himself, and what it was like to live through this in our own family and have the profound understanding that he has, and certainly I do, um, of these situations and what, you know, what they are and what they're not. And that this had wound up being the opposite of what he says he was trying to do. What advice did you give him? I don't remember giving him advice. I don't, know, I don't remember. I didn't give him advice about what to do or not do in a situation like this. Did you make any suggestions about what he should or shouldn't do? No. Suggest that he should apologize? Always. Always. I believe, no matter what your intentions were, I know this doesn't play well in cancel culture, and I know that this doesn't play well in the court of law, and it certainly wouldn't play well in this room, but if somebody is offended by something that you did, if somebody thought it was wrong, you should apologize, because even if you didn't intend it that way, you should care about what their response was and how they experienced it. So I always advise that to anybody in any situation. Did you advise that to Governor Cuomo in this situation with respect to Ms. Bennett? Yes. And what did he say? I don't remember him saying anything. I think that that was understood. And what do you mean by He understood? was upset that Charlotte Bennett was upset. He expressed being upset? Yes. Um, did you advise him that he should personally apologize to her? Yes. And what did he say? I, I don't remember specifically. No. But it was understood that that was going to happen. That he was personally going to apologize to her? Yes. To your knowledge, has that happened? Yes. I believe that his statement was apologetic. And I think I, I just I think I just went past one. Um, it is absolutely my understanding that Andrew's response to what happened there was that there's regret. I see. So his public statement expressing yes. that he was sorry. That, if that you're asking me, do I know that he has reached out to Charlotte Bennett personally to apologize? I do not know that. Okay. So you advise the governor that he should say he was sorry. You advise the governor should be a personal sorry, meaning specific to Ms. Bennett. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. What other advice did you give to the governor about how to respond to Ms. Bennett's allegations? I don't remember specifically going through it with him. I was part of a lot of conversations where this was being discussed. Okay. Why don't you take us through the other conversations that you were... Sorry, yeah. Sorry, Paul. You mentioned earlier that you knew, uh, in understanding him, you knew what he and his family had gone through. What did you, what did you mean by that? I mean that Andrew has experience and knowledge about sexual assault and how it affects people. And what is that experience and knowledge? He has personal experience with it in our family and in the circle of people that he cares about and on occasions where people have come to him for help. 
So you mean family members who were su themselves subject to uh, sexual assault? Yes. How, how many members of his family have come to him as victims of sexual assault? It's not for me to discuss. The number? Yeah. These are very, these are very personal things. And I don't know that it's my place uh, to discuss other people's experiences, except unless they are specifically relevant to what you guys are investigating. I don't think this is, that's fair to them, with all due respect, counsel. Did the governor tell you that he had spoken to Ms. Bennett about any specific family members who experienced sexual assault? Yes. What did he tell you with respect to that? I believe that he had discussed what had happened with his And did he tell you any, any of the details that he discussed with Ms. Bennett about what happened with No, ma'am. Um, and did he tell you why he discussed any particulars about Ms. Bennett? To help her understand that he could relate to what she was experiencing. Um, uh, before those questions, that we were talking about conversations in which you participated with other people, not just Governor Cuomo. Um, relating to how to respond to Ms. Bennett's allegations. Talk us through what you remember about those. I mean, I only have general recollections of just listening in on conversations and um, there being a lot of emails sent around, uh, most of which I ignored. Um, but I don't remember I mean, you got to help me out with, okay. what, you know, what you want to know. Were there discussions about whether there might be other complainants? Yes. And tell us what you remember about that. Exactly that, that there was a concern about, is anybody else going to come out? Maybe not specifically right then when Charlotte Bennett came out, but thereafter when people did start to come out. Okay. And... Um, Around the time of Charlotte Bennett, what do you recall anyone saying about who might come out or about how many there might be? Nothing. You remember any names coming up? No, ma'am. Did Caitlin come up? Not that I recall. Um, Did you? Go okay, ahead. Okay. You've said with respect to Ms. Boylan that various people ascribed. Um, evil motives to her, that she's out to get the governor, things along those lines. Did anyone say anything along those lines with regard to Charlotte Bennett? Yes. I'm just trying to think about, I'm trying to be more helpful to you about who. Um, obviously, that's your next question. I remember, well, start at the top. Andrew believed that Charlotte Bennett coming out about this and discussing it publicly may have been a function of her being uh, encouraged by people who are politically opposed to him. So not that, you know, she was making this up, uh, to be clear, but that people may have been encouraging her to come forward. I don't remember who specifically that was. Anyone else that you had any discussions with who suggested that there was some sort of ill motive behind Ms. Bennett coming forward? There was suspicion on calls that she had been pushed to come forward. Uh, and I remember there dis being discussion that Lindsey Boylan may have had, or Karen Hinton may have had, some kind of 
tangential personal connection to her or who wound up representing her, but nothing specific and nothing that I found particularly interesting. It didn't really matter to me. And on the calls, do you recall who was making these comments Not about, I'm sorry. about suppositions that Ms. Bennett might have a relationship with Ms. Hinton or Ms. Boylan? Or? I'm sorry, Counselor. I didn't mean to jump your question. That's okay. Um, no, not specifically. Um, do you recall whether Ms. DeRosa ever ascribed any motives either to Ms. Bennett or to suggested there might be people putting her up to it? Not specifically. Do you recall generally what, what Ms. DeRosa's response was to the, the, the allegations by Ms. Bennett? Melissa DeRosa believes that this was widely political and that there is no coincidence that, after all the years that he had been doing this, that there was a, uh, that after all the years that my brother had been in public service, that there was all of a sudden this flurry of this exactly at the time that he was most politically powerful. And specific to Charlotte Bennett, I don't remember that specifically being articulated to me um, or explained that way. But I do remember it in general with respect to the, the, the allegations. And once Ms. Bennett's allegations were public, did Ms. DeRosa, in any of those conversations, say that she had known about Ms. Bennett's allegations many months before Ms. Boylan started tweeting? I don't remember timing, but I do remember that Melissa DeRosa knew about these allegations before I did. Okay, Jen. Um, we, were, we were talking about whether there might be um, any other complainants. Did, did you reach out to anyone to try to find out if there might be any other complainants? Yes. Who did you reach out to? I would, when asked, I would reach out to sources, other journalists, to see if they had heard of anybody else coming out. And what were your sources telling you? It depends on what point in time. Okay, at this point in time, this is right after Charlotte has gone public. I don't remember asking anybody at that time. Okay. What's the first time you recall asking anyone about whether there might be any other women? I'd have to review these, but I remember Melissa asking me at some point that either they wanted to know if I knew or could find out if more were coming or that she had heard that one or maybe two more were coming and could I find out. Did you ever reach out to sources to find to get information regarding any of the complainants or any other women other than at the direction or request of Mr. Rosa? Did you do it on your own? No. Bless you. Um, before we look at documents, what do you remember about discussions about? If I, if I might, Counselor, sure, just please. to give you some more context on that, mm -hmm. I would never do oppo research on anybody alleging anything like this. I'm not in the oppo research business. I don't tolerate a lot of oppo research on any level. And I was never aware of anything like what you're suggesting, nor did I ever participate in, nor did I ever suggest, nor would I ever tolerate anything like what you're suggesting. Okay. When you say oppo research, what do you mean? The idea of trying to find ways to disparage people who come forward with allegations like this is not what I'm about. Do you recall at some point that you received a complaint related to um, Hamilton College? No. Okay. We'll come to that in a minute then. Um, I understand you're saying you didn't do any opposition research on any of the women who have... I don't even know of any opposition research being done. That's what I was just going to And ask. I don't even know that I would call it that mm -hmm. if that's what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, 
What about uh, research or opposition research on uh, individuals who might have done a, an investigation of the allegations of harassment against the governor? I never heard anything about that. Were you involved in any of that? No. You never heard anything about that? No. No one asked you to do any research on Mr. Kim? No. On Mr. Ms. Clark? No. You were never in any discussions where Mr. Kim or Ms. Clark were discussed? Uh, yes. Okay, tell us about those discussions. That you guys were going to be doing the investigation and, you know, what, what that meant about how long this would take and, you know, the nature of the process. Was there any discussion about either uh, negative information or information that could be used to undermine the credibility of Mr. Kim or Ms. Clark? No. There was discussion about whether or not Andrew and some of his advisors felt that it was fair that you two were looking into this. And tell us about those discussions. I mean, um, I was peripheral and not involved in a lot of them. Um, but there was uh, a sense expressed that having someone who um, uh, litigates plaintiff's Me Too claims uh, and having somebody who had actively investigated Andrew for years did not bode that well for what the outcome of the process would be. Any other things that were discussed about Mr. Kim or Ms. Clark? Just what they represented as uh, political aspects to this process. And the political aspect was that Mr. Kim has previously been involved in an investigation into uh, Mr. Cuomo? The Among other, other things, yes. What are the other things? That, and remember, June, it's not coming from me. I didn't know you before all this, all right? Um, but that, you know, he, uh, Counselor Kim is obviously very close to uh, Preet Bharara, and uh, you know, that they had been part of an investigation of my brother, and now he was going to be investigating him again, and that was... Uh, appeared to them to be a fairly obvious conflict, that there were connections between uh, Lindsey Boylan and the Attorney General, and that they were worried that there was coordination, that her complaint was being front-loaded uh, by the Attorney General, maybe for her own um, political motivations. Um, and they were worried about it. They were worried that this was going to look like one thing but be a very different thing. Um, when you say that there were discussions about the connections between Ms. Boylan and the Attorney General, what were those connections that were discussed? I'm not the best person to ask. And again, uh, with all due respect, I know the work you do. I know the work you've done. I was not particularly interested in the two of you. Um, somebody was going to investigate it. Uh, I never expected it to be, um, you know, this process, I think, is, is fairly obvious. Um, so what I was told, or what I remember hearing, was that Lindsey Boylan had a campaign manager person, I don't know what the right title is, who came from or was close to the Attorney General's office, and that there was concern that there had been coordination, therefore. Again, I don't know a lot about it. It's not something that I was pursuing. It's not really of particular interest to me at this time. And you said that there was concerns that the, I think you said Ms. Boylan's complaint was front-loaded by the AG. What does that mean? That the AG was going to assess it and give it importance to help Ms. Boylan and to hurt the governor uh, and to, by extension, help the attorney general who they believe is feeling out whether or not he's vulnerable enough, maybe because of her own efforts, to run against him. Were there any other um, concerns that you became aware of about either Mr. Kim, Ms. Clark, or the AG? Not specifically, and again, I wasn't looking for it. But generally, anything else you haven't told us? I've told you what I know.
Prior to um, Mr. Kim and Ms. Clark being appointed, um, were you involved in any discussions about the need for an outside review of the allegations of harassment against Governor Cuomo? Only to the extent that I told my brother on many occasions, you tell the truth, you get out in front of this and you do that. You do not go against anybody who has accused you of anything. You ask for process. This has to be investigated. You ask for process because that's the right thing to do. What did the governor say in response to you telling him he should ask for process? He agreed. And what views did he express about what that process should be? None that I recall. Did you ever have, participate in any conversation in which the governor expressed a preference for who should conduct that process? I do remember being a part of conversations where they were mentioning people who I'd never heard of before. Who were those people? You'd have to give me some names. Uh, Barbara Jones? Yes, that's the, I'll, I'll take your word for it, yes. <laughs> yes. And what do you remember about the discussions about uh, Ms. Jones? Just that she was somebody that Steve Cohen uh, knew or worked with or both, and that she might be somebody who would be seen as acceptable um, to the media and the rest of the politicos. And um, were there any discussions you were involved in with the governor um, about whether the AG should be involved in the investigation? Um, no, not that I recall. Or whether the AG should be a part of the selection process for the whoever would do the investigation? I just remember that once the AG was looped in, that there was a concern that this was no longer going to be fair. And that concern was based on what you've expressed to us before about views that the AG had connections to Ms. Boylan and that the AG may have up, uh, wished to run for political office? Yes, Counselor. Do you mind if we take just a five minute break, Mr. Sure, Cuomo? Sure. Thank you. Time now is 12.25 p.m. This begins media three on the record. Mr. Cuomo, can you turn to what is tab 12 in the larger binder in front of you, please? I thought you wanted to. Oh, I apologize. Yes, you wanted to clarify something. Yes. Um, in the spirit of completeness, you asked me early on, who knows that I'm giving testimony today? Um, I said my family. That's a little bit of an expansive term for me. Uh, I've tried to be quiet about the fact that I'm coming in. I didn't think it did me any favors, and frankly, I don't know that it does you guys any favors. So um, my agent knows. You know, These are all people who are intimates to me. Um, I've tried to be cagey about it, you know, my, my team um, knows that something's up. You know, they, they knew, uh, most of them know that I got a subpoena, uh, my senior staff. But I just want to be fully uh, complete on it. It's not just my wife and my siblings. Um, but I've tried to be discreet about this. When you say your team, who do you mean? My executive producer. Um, I don't think any of my senior producers, um, my direct producer, um, has an idea that I've been getting ready for this and there's something weird because I'm not, I'm telling her, leave me alone, I'll, I'll call you later. So I just, it's not, I know it doesn't really matter, but just for the spirit of completeness. Okay, I appreciate the clarification. Okay. Thank you. If there's anything else you want to clarify throughout the day, just let me know. Thank you, Counselor. Um, why don't we turn to tab 12 okay. uh, in the larger binder. Um, and. We'll look at tab 12 and tab 13 together. Okay. You want to look at tab 13 as well? And we'll mark this as the uh, next two exhibits, please. Okay. 
Um, these two emails reflect a discussion among a group of people regarding a statement the governor might make in response to Charlotte Bennett's allegations. Is that right? That's how it comes across. Okay. What do you recall about discussions about a, the governor's statement in response to Ms. Bennett's allegations? I don't specifically recall um, discussing what the statement would be. With anyone? No, not specifically. I mean, I am on this email. Uh, I don't even remember seeing the emails. Did you discuss um, with Governor Cuomo what his statement should be in response to Ms. Bennett's allegations? Yes, I believe so. And what did you discuss with Governor Cuomo? That he should tell the truth, that he should not have to be coaxed to come out about it, and that he should own aspects of the allegations. What did you mean by shouldn't have to be coaxed? Don't have people chasing after you in my business about this allegation. And what did you mean by he should own aspects of the allegations? That you said things that you shouldn't have said. And he should own it. And what were the things you told Governor Cuomo he shouldn't have said? I wasn't specific. In your own mind, what were the things Governor Cuomo should not have said to Ms. Bennett? I don't think that it was a good judgment to believe that no matter how sincere the request for his help or how much he cared about trying to help, that he should have engaged in this kind of dialogue with somebody in Charlotte Bennett's stated position. And when you say this kind of dialogue, what dialogue are you talking about? About being sexually assaulted, about what that meant for her personal life, about how that should be handled going forward. What about the governor's discussion with Ms. Bennett of his own personal life and dating life? What did you say to him about that? I don't remember that being a specific concern for me. You didn't think that was inappropriate? My focus is on the fact that Charlotte Bennett is somebody who I believe, whom I believe, um, suffered. And that demands a respect that may wind up demanding restraint. And that wasn't exercised here. That's my concern. Um, yes, he's my brother. And I love him to death, no matter what. I only got one. But I have a lot of feeling for what I learned about Charlotte Bennett and where this was coming from. Very different than anything else I had to learn about in this process. And I'm very sensitive to that. What did the governor say after you told him he should own some of the uh, allegations that Ms. Bennett had made? I knew it would come with a division of opinion um, on his team. I mean, obviously, I don't have to tell you guys you're a bunch of lawyers. You know, the, being in the acknowledgement business isn't great when you're being investigated. Um, that said, I believe that the governor has different responsibilities than just being, you know, a quasi-defendant. And I know, admit nothing, admit nothing. I know, I know. Believe me, I deal with it in my business all the time. I didn't think it was the right thing to do here. Um. I should state my question more clearly. What did the governor say to you about your uh, advice that he own some of the allegations Ms. Bennett had made? He understood. What did he say? I don't remember precisely. Do you remember generally? I remember that he listened, he understood what I was saying, and he accepted it. And did he agree? I believe so. Um, when the statement, this statement that you see here uh, in the drafts, which is on tabs 12 and tabs 13. Um, it's the first email in the chain in both.
What is your understanding of how this was prepared? Um, nothing specific other than it was part of this collaborative effort that they have there as a pretty usual dynamic, I think, in most shops. Do you know if the first draft was prepared by the governor? I do not. Um, there's a debate in these emails, as you can see, about use of the word paternalistic. You see that? I do. What do you recall about a debate over the use of the word paternalistic in the governor's statement regarding Ms. Bennett's allegations? I don't. You don't recall any discussion about use of the word paternalistic? I, I, can, I know what's here. Mm -hmm. I don't remember being part of any such discussion, and I wasn't in this thread. Did the governor describe his interactions with Ms. Bennett as being paternalistic to you? The, my brother told me that he thought that he was helpful, that she looked to him for advice and that she respected and trusted what he was telling her. Did he describe himself as being paternalistic towards I don't remember her? the word. I'm sorry. I don't remember the word. Do you remember him, him describing himself as acting in a fatherly way? I remember that being said. I don't know if it was from my brother directly. Do you remember any discussion or debate about whether, in fact, how Governor Cuomo spoke to Ms. Bennett was fatherly? No. Or whether how Governor Cuomo um, spoke, whether any, there was any debate about how Governor spoke to Ms. Bennett being helpful? Not that I recall from being present. What about any debate about whether what the Governor said to Ms. Bennett um, being appropriate in a mentor-mentee relationship? I don't remember that dynamic of discussion with my presence. Were you involved in any discussions in which anyone told the governor that what he had said to Ms. Bennett was wrong? He shouldn't have said it. I'm not sure I was part of the conversation, but I am aware that he was told by people around him that this was bad judgment. Who are those people who said that? I already told you I am. Mm -hmm. um, members of my family. Um, and I'm not sure about which members of his team. Can you recall any member of the governor's staff or any of the consultants who work with the governor's staff telling the governor that what he said to Ms. Bennett was either bad judgment or inappropriate or words to that effect? With the context that I think that that was general knowledge, uh, I know that Melissa DeRosa absolutely felt like that. How do you know that Melissa DeRosa absolutely felt like that? I discussed it with her. What did she say? This was bad judgment. Anything else? Um, not that I recall. Did you re discuss the substance of what Ms. Uh, Bennett had alleged the governor said with Mr. Rosa? I was never uh, anxious to go through the details of anything that was alleged. Why is that? Because it makes me uncomfortable. Why is that? because I don't like what's being alleged. It should make you uncomfortable. Like it made Miss Bennett uncomfortable. That's for her to say. Um, did the governor ever tell you he had a conversation with Ms. DeRosa one-on-one -on -one about Miss Bennett's allegations? No, but I would assume, well, that's not fair, no. Did he ever tell you Ms. DeRosa had become upset with him as a result of Ms. Bennett's allegations? Maybe. And what do you remember about that? People were upset at him mm -hmm. um, about this. And who expressed being upset at him that was a member of his staff? I think Melissa DeRosa did, mm -hmm. but I don't want to limit it to her mm -hmm. um, because 
that's not fair to anybody else who felt that way. I just don't have their name in my recollection. And I don't remember being there where somebody was going, well, not going out, but talking to Andrew about that specifically. But I'm not saying it didn't happen. Okay. Do you remember any conversation you had with Governor Cuomo in which he, he told you that members of his staff had told him that they were upset with him? Yes. And what did, what did he say? That. That, that he, that mem the people were not happy about this. And, and that it had been bad judgment. My brother never relayed that anybody thought that he had done things and said things the way they were being alleged. Um, but that this was something that should have never happened. And who were the people who he said on his staff had said that they were? I mean, other than Melissa DeRosa, <laughs> Maybe uh, it was Stephanie Benton, or m maybe it was also the officials who met with Charlotte Bennett. But again, I don't, I don't want to state as a matter of certainty that I know that. I just remember getting that sense from the conversations. Did the governor ever express to you concern that Mr. Rosa may quit? No, my brother never told me that he thought Melissa DeRosa was going to quit. Did you discuss with your brother anything about whether Melissa DeRosa might leave the chamber or take another position? Yes. Okay. Uh, I would discuss with my brother that this was incredibly taxing and damaging to everybody around him and that the scrutiny and the attention was going to be very hard and that was obviously feeling a lot of it. She had been targeted uh, during this process. And I think that's very hard to take, especially um, f as she has expressed as a woman in her position. When you say has been targeted in this process, what do you mean? That people have scrutinized her and criticized her and tried to connect her to my brother as either some type of go-between or enabler or lover or a menu of items that are insulting and hurtful. Let's go back to the um, emails that are in front of you. There's a recitation in these emails about a clause coming out, and that clause is, nor did I ever think that I was, what page you want? oh, so you can pick a page, but I'm on tab 13, the second page at the very top. Yes, Councillor, yep. I'm there. Yep. Nor did I ever think that I was acting in any way that was inappropriate. What do you remember about discussions about that clause coming out of Governor Cuomo's statement regarding Ms. Bennett? Nothing. You, weren't, you don't recall anyone talking about whether the governor should not say that he never thought he was acting in any way that was inappropriate? I don't. Did you ever talk to the governor about whether he should say that he never thought he was acting in any way that was inappropriate? No. Did you ever talk to the governor about whether he thought that he was acting inappropriately? Yes. And what did he say? No. Let's turn to tab 14. There's a lot of pages in tab 14. I don't know if you want to go through them first. Uh, whatever you'd like, Counselor. Well, I, I, why don't you page through them? Um, these are text messages between you and Josh Flasto, correct? Yes. Okay. And I apologize for the way they print out. They print out one text per each page. Um, but on the first page, this is on Saturday, February 27th, which, just to remind you, is the day that Charlotte Bennett's New York Times article came out. 
And Mr. Vlaster writes to you, if people accept it, then we live with Jones and she does her thing and we hope another woman, one, doesn't drop. What did you understand Mr. Vlaster to be talking about when he said, if people accept it? I don't remember specifically at the time, but in a reading right now, if people accept it means if the choice of Jones, who I believe would be Barbara Jones, as the investigator is acceptable. Uh, do you recall whether you were on the phone with other people while you were texting Mr. Blasto? Meaning, was I talking to some people and texting with him? Correct. I don't remember that here. I don't remember that here. Okay, why don't we look through it if you, it refreshes your memory and let me know. Um, and it said, we hope another woman doesn't drop. Does this refresh your recollection of any conversations that were had about another complainant potentially coming forward? I don't remember that at this time they knew another uh, allegation may come. Um, and at this time, did you understand anyone to be doing, making any efforts to determine whether there might be another complainant? No. Um, if you look at the next message, it says, if they don't, then Tish jumps in and get a special prosecutor. And then it's a tougher situation, but still survivable. What did you understand Blaster to mean by that? The plain reading that if Barbara Jones wasn't the investigator, then the attorney general may take initiative to own this situation. And there was concern about that. Josh uh, Vlasto was one of the few who was not concerned about it. Uh, he believed that Tish, that the Attorney General um, was not going to run and that that wasn't her interest here and that was a minority opinion. Um, and the reference to survivable, what did you understand him to mean by that? That Andrew would be alive at the end of it. Did you understand that to mean that he would still be the governor at the end? I think it was pretty unclear at that time. Uh, was there any discussion about steps that the governor should take in addition to requesting that an investigation be done? I don't know what you mean by additional steps. So, for example, was there any discussion about whether the governor should seek counseling? Not that I can recall. Was there any discussion about whether an HR function should be established for the executive chamber? An HR function? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Human resources function. A human resources part I get. But what do you mean by a function? Uh, an office for human resources within the executive chamber. No. My understanding was there was. Okay. Was there any discussion like that about steps that should be taken in light of the fact that allegations of sexual harassment had been made to improve Ye the executive chamber? Sorry, Councilor. Sure. Yes. What were those discussions? I remember that there was uh, a big push from Andrew to be remedial in advance uh, and that some were saying, no, wait till you're told uh, what to do. Um, and he didn't think that was right. He thought that he could see what needed to change here in terms of the culture and the ma maintaining or maintenance of that culture and that it should be done in advance. And what things, um, remedial things, were being tabled? Um, having somebody come in and assess how things were handled in the office, how these were handled, how they should be handled, how things can be handled differently or better, and that that should be instituted. Any other remedial measures that were discussed? Not that I can recall. That was about the chamber. Were there any remedial measures discussed that were specific to the governor? Not that I recall. Um, and the people who took the position that the remedial measures should, should wait, um, what did they want to wait for? For process. The conclusion of this process? I don't know about the conclusion, but that they should just wait. Until? I, I don't know exactly. Okay. Um, and who was in which camp? All I know is that Andrew was in the let's make changes now. Okay. 
to your understanding, what changes have been made? I don't know. Did you ever talk to Governor Cuomo about whether he was making the changes he thought should be made? I have not. My scope of interest is in my brother, trying to help him with my head and my heart any way I can, and trying to insulate my family uh, from this uh, in terms of the animus and the toxicity of it. How many times can you remember Governor Cuomo discussing taking remedial measures after the allegations by Ms. Bennett came out? Several. Can you remember any other remedial measures other than hiring someone to come in and do an assessment of how things are handled in the chamber? I think my brother seemed to understand that holistically, that whatever somebody you know, who knew what were the best practices said should be that should be uh, put into practice. And when you say best practices, do you mean best practices with respect to sexual harassment? I think office culture uh, was seen as being a little bit more broad than that. Did you have conversations with Governor Cuomo about his perspective on the office culture of the executive chamber? Not that I recall specifically, no. Generally? No, I, I don't remember it being something that we dis discussed. But there was a discussion that something about the culture had to be changed or assessed, right? Yes, that came from him. And what was he saying needed to be changed or assessed? Well, he didn't say specifically. He said we should bring somebody in or he should bring somebody in and um, have them do an assessment of everything that was done here and how it's done and whatever fixes that they recommend we should do. That's the way he framed it. Yeah, I remember there being more to it than that. I just, I don't remember specifically what it was. Um, if you continue in the text message chain. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vlasta writes, but the leaders have weighed in, so no quick push to resign. What did you understand him to mean by leaders? I remember, I don't remember this specifically in that moment. But I do remember that I believed that this was going to get very severe and that the idea that, that it was seen as more incremental by some of the people in the group I didn't see it that way. I knew that this was going to be bad, um, and I was expressing that. I understood that that wasn't a great thing to be saying um, to a group of people who were worried and trying to minim mitigate, you know what I mean, figure out a way to deal with and survive politically. But that could be the context here. His, Josh's assessment was that all of this was survivable politically, um, including this process and what will happen afterwards with uh, the state legislature, that um, this in some total is survivable for the governor. Uh, at this point, there had been two complainants who had come forward, Ms. Right. Boylan uh, and Ms. Bennett. Was it you said that your expectation was this was going to, I think you said, get bad. Um, were you expecting there to be more complainants? My word is severe. Uh, no, I had no expectation that there would be more. I would begin to feel that way. But I thought that this was enough. Um, given the state of play in my brother's political party, I mean, I, I thought that this was a, he had a real problem on his hands and it needed to be handled like that. If you continue through the text message, um, there's a discussion about Judith Kay, and then it says, wrap it up, getting loose. We are, just need to be focused on the details to all fine and aggressive is good. Can you help us understand what the context for these texts Yes. Are? As I stated uh, earlier and immediately previous uh, to these questions, I was not always popular on the phone calls. Um, 
And my role there was not to be a part of the team. I didn't have a role on the team. I'm not on his team. I'm his brother. Um, and I'm a Cuomo. And I felt like I was pushing that this is real. Uh, it has to be dealt with. It has to be owned. It has to be done. And the idea of two sides to this does not exist in our media culture or in the democratic political culture. You have to tell the truth. You have to come out. You have to ask for process. And anything else than that is unhelpful, unproductive, and wrong. And this was Josh telling me to shut up. Meaning don't say those things. Enough. And were, was he characterizing you as being aggressive? Yes. Okay. Oh, may I look? Sure. It's on 3526 on the bottom right-hand corner. I'm not sure. Um, and what were you suggesting other than, I think you told us the governor should own part of the allegations, that they, he shouldn't have to be coaxed. Were there other suggestions you made about how to handle this? I think you said ask for process. I apologize, I missed that one. Tell the truth. Don't be pushed to tell the truth. Own what was bad judgment. And do not litigate or treat as a confrontation any of these allegations. You ask for process, you ask for it to be investigated. That's it. And there was a division on that. Um, I think you've described that to us before. Um, why don't we turn to tab 15. And we'll mark that as the next exhibit. We'll come back to the Blasto text in a little bit. Um, this is a uh, a copy of the statement that Governor Cuomo released on February 27th regarding uh, Ms. Bennett, and then there's a statement from uh, Beth Garvey. You see that? I do. Um, and we looked at drafts of Governor Cuomo's statement from earlier, and you said you had no recollection of providing any comments on it. Is that right? Um, yes. I wasn't a substantive player uh, in a lot of these determinations. Um, have Ms. With respect to Ms. Garvey's statement, did you see a copy of that in advance of it being released publicly? Not that I can remember. Do you recall any discussions about Ms. Garvey's statement? Not that I can remember, Counselor. Do you recall any discussion about Ms. Bennett requesting a transfer um, out of her position in the exec assisting the governor as a briefer? I don't remember specifically someone telling me about it. I do remember generally being on conversations where either someone who was part of that conversation or someone who knew about the conversation said it had occurred. And did they explain why it had occurred? The, yes, that there had been a complaint. And was there any discussions about whether that was the appropriate course of action to take in response to Ms. Bennett's complaint? First, not that there had been a complaint, mm -hmm. that Charlotte Bennett was upset and wanted to talk, you know, just to distinguish it from like a formal, uh, you know, complaint. You know, I, I don't know that that's what had happened. Um, please repeat your question. Was there any discussion about whether that was the appropriate course of action to take in response to Ms. Bennett expressing concern about her interactions with Governor Cuomo? I don't remember being a part of anything where that was the focus. Were you part of any discussion in which the process by which Ms. Bennett's original allegations back in the summer of 2020 were handled was discussed? Not that I recall, Counselor. Was there any discussion about Gower? 
goer. Have you ever heard the term goer? Um, maybe. Is it the entity that deals with these? That's correct. It the is state? the entity that deals with these allegations within the um, state. I don't. I was not part of any conversation where we specifically discussed what was done and how it was done, and you know, I, I don't remember being a player in any of that. I do remember generally that they were. I remember being on calls where people were asking about it and they were being told what the process was. I do remember that. I didn't pay particular attention because. I, I just, I don't know, I, it didn't matter to me mm -hmm. um, in terms of where my focus was in that moment. Can you remember any of the discussion about what the process was? No. Did you understand that Ms. Bennett had been transferred out of her position because she had asked to do so because she was uncomfortable being around the governor? Yes. I agree with the interpretation that was suggested to me that Charlotte Bennett had said there was another position that she wanted and I th think had applied for previous. I'm not sure about that. I think so. I, th I, I think I remember that and that that happened as a result of this. You know, ask my question again. Um, I'm sorry if I missed the question. No, that's okay. Um, did you understand that Ms. Bennett had been transferred out of her position because she had become uncomfortable being around the governor? Not exactly the way you frame it. Okay. And what's wrong with the way I framed it? Nothing. I just, my understanding is different. That's all. Okay. What's your understanding? Um, that that's what Charlotte Bennett wanted um, to happen. Okay, so let me phrase it this way. So your understanding was that Ms. Bennett wanted to be transferred out of her position because she had become uncomfortable being around the governor. I know that my understanding was that she wanted the different position before all of this. And then when she went to talk to them, that the resolution was that she would go to the different position. Did anyone convey to you that Ms. Bennett had expressed that she had become uncomfortable being around the governor? Yes. Did anyone express to you that Ms. Bennett had conveyed that she had become scared of the governor? No. Who conveyed to you that Ms. Bennett had become uncomfortable around the governor? I may have read it. Uh, I don't remember it being specifically said to me by anyone. After um, the release of the statement on the 27th, were you part of any discussions about public perception about this statement? Yes. You can tell us about that. I was asked by my brother what I thought the reaction was, and I gave him my take. Uh, Josh Vlasto uh, would ask me pretty much any time anything came out two or three of them, out of a bucket of 10, may reach out and say, what did you hear? How's it playing? What do you know, uh, you know about how it's being perceived? What are people saying to you? That was being asked of everyone um, pretty constantly. And I believed that my sense was reflected in how it was being perceived, which is this is serious and has to be treated that way. What did you tell Governor Cuomo was your take on public perception on his February 27th statement? This is a problem and you have to explain it and you have to own that this was bad judgment. Um, and that has to be clear. I mean, my opinion never changed. And so I guess I'm just trying to understand, was, was your view or take that you expressed to Governor Cuomo that this statement didn't sufficiently own it? No, but just that it, it was going to be a continuing concern. This wasn't a one-day story. And what did you tell him about public perception about this statement? 
that as a Democrat, this was not going to just go away and he was going to have to deal with it and that he had to assume that people in his party were going to come after him. Did you advise your brother to do anything after February 27th, after the statement was issued? With respect to? The allegations of sexual harassment against him. So the statement comes out, you have a conversation with him about your take on public perception. And sort of what's the next thing that you're involved in with respect to the allegations of sexual harassment? I mean, there were more. So as there were more, he would ask me to listen to what was being said and help him. Um, were you involved in the preparation of Governor Cuomo for a press conference in early March? I was on uh, some of the conversations about it, and it was a very frenetic process, and I just defaulted to speaking to him directly. Um, about reinforcing the points that I've made to you. I'm happy to repeat them if you'd like okay. me to. But that was my mantra. Did you ask to participate in the prep for the press conference in early March? I don't know about exactly that press conference, but I did from time to time when I felt that I was being, I was out of the loop for something that I wanted to understand so that I could have some sense of whether or not this was being handled the way I thought it should. Um, I don't know if that was one of those particular occasions. Um, did you have an understanding that the prep for the press conference was occurring some, in some parts in person, that people were staying at the mansion and were with him in person? Uh, I think so. Were you at the mansion in person for the prep of the press conference? No. Uh, was any of your, your family there for the prep of the press conference, prep for the press conference? I'm not sure. Um, let's turn to tab 16. And we'll mark this as the next exhibit. Yes. Um, this is an email chain that you're on between you and a number of people um, uh, in, from the senior staff of the executive chamber and those who are consulting with the senior staff. Do you remember what this email is? Beyond the plain reading of it? Well, what, it, what do you think the draft in here is for? There's a draft of a statement, correct? Yes. And what was it for? I don't know specifically what it was for. Um, do you know generally what it was for? Generally, it was what it reads as, which is an explanation for him about his behavior with people in the office. I think it is important for me to reiterate that I was often not part of the process. And my suggestions as they may be becoming to you right now were a little tedious uh, in terms of their consistency and insistence. And in that way, sometimes I would be excluded from what was happening because they knew what my concern was. Mm -hmm. And it didn't always fit their strategy. And on this, all I can say is that it was very important to me that my brother not suggest that everything that happened was okay just because he meant it in a benign way, that that's not how it works. Um, 
and that was something that I see reflected in this draft, at least. I don't know if this was the ultimate statement. Do you recall raising that concern about this draft? Not specifically, but I may well have because I did very consistently. And meaning you consistently raised the notion that the governor's sort of intent didn't matter. It matters, but, and not to explain the obvious, but if it wasn't okay with you, even if I thought it was okay, if it wasn't okay with you, even when in the past it had been okay, or I thought it had been, it is now not okay. And that must be owned, it has to be acknowledged, it has to be respected, and you should apologize. I think that that's really important in these situations as a leader, let alone as like a decent uh, person. So I see that reflected in here. It may well be that that was something I had been saying on a phone call I know it's not in this thread, but. And you said that wasn't their strategy. So who's the they and what's the strategy? Not to be unfair, mm -hmm. but sometimes what their strategy was to respond to a specific allegation and they'd want to say this wasn't true or he hadn't done this and that's it. They didn't, they didn't feel the need to be expansive. And, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I respect that's, that's their role. But they couldn't do that with Ms. Bennett, right? They couldn't say the governor never did this with respect to Ms. Bennett. Well, I think that that becomes part of your guys' assessment of what this is, uh, you know, and what he did with respect to what you see this as. Well, I'm, I'm trying to understand what the conversation was. And so what was their strategy, the executive chamber's senior staff strategy with respect to Charlotte Bennett? I don't remember a distinct strategy for Charlotte Bennett. Okay. Um, certainly not one that I was part of. Um, was there ever discussion about doing a point-by-point -point refutation of Ms. Boylan's allegations? There was a rolling conversation about doing point-by-point -point pushback on all of the allegations. Mm -hmm. And who was in favor of doing the point-by-point -point pushback? my brother, and then a passing assortment of people, depending on the point they were at, what wave of complaints had just come out, and what kind of behavior they went to. Um, sometimes I, uh, Beth Garvey, Steve Cohen, you know, they could be in that place occasionally. And what did the governor say about why he wanted to do a point-by-point -point refutation of some of the allegations? Because it was untrue. And that he believed that by ignoring the allegation, he was admitting or acknowledging that it happened. And do you recall which particular allegations the governor said he wanted to point-by-point -point refute and that they were not true? I don't remember him ever not wanting to uh, refute the allegations. What was his point-by-point -point refutation of Ms. Bennett's allegations? That he had never groomed, he had never solicited, he had never hit on, he had never tried to manipulate uh, or do anything to make her feel anything but supported and cared about. Did he ever point-by-point -point refute the content of their conversation? as opposed to the import of their conversation? Not that I can recall. Um, in this statement that you, you can see before you, there is, there's a reference uh, to Miss Bennett uh, ex to the office hearing anecdotally that some people had reached out to Ms. Bennett to express, express displeasure about her coming forward. Do you see that? Yes. What is your understanding about um, whether there had been outreach to Ms. Bennett to express displeasure? I don't know anything about that. You don't know whether that was true or not true? I don't know if it were true or not true.
Yeah, let's go back to tab 14. So just to move us along chronologically, while this draft is being um, circulated, it appears that you're have, you have some text messages with Mr. Velasco. So just chronologically, these texts are happening when this draft has been circulated. Do you remember texting with Mr. Velasco while the draft statement was being discussed? Um, not specifically, but I, I accept that that's what was happening based on the timing. And can I just try to understand the dynamic? So when these big calls are, are going on, is Mr. Velasco the only person you're having like a side text with? Not always. I wouldn't be having like multiple. I had to listen. Um, but I knew Josh, Melissa, and Liz, and uh, Jeff Pollock better. So they may text me during these conversations. Um, you delete your text messages. So do you remember having text messages with Mr. Rosa, Mr. Pollock, or Ms. Liss about these statements that were being drafted? Not specifically, but I do acknowledge that these were to me. This is my number. And I'm sure that this was a text conversation with me. Right. This is with Mr. Vlasto. Yes. Okay. So are there text messages that you might have deleted about the uh, draft statements that were being prepared for the governor that were with Mr. Pollock or Ms. Liss? None that I specifically recall, but I absolutely deleted um, uh, messages as I go along, as is my practice. Okay. Um, if you start at the bottom of the page, is 3533 in the right-hand corner. If you look at the bottom right-hand corner, you see little numbers there? Yes. Okay. And the one that ends 3533 three, three is what begins on February yes, 20th. Yes, There you go. Um, any understanding of what more or less was in reference to? No. Uh, and the next page, it, Josh says, Mr. Velasco says, we'll need to have Tish do the investigation, but is what it is. What do you remember about on February 28th um, the discussion about attorney, attorney general, do, the attorney general doing the investigation. Uh, Josh is feeling that while he was not of the belief that Tish James, uh, the attorney general, wanted this because she wanted to run against Andrew necessarily, that she wanted to do this investigation, and that once it was rejected that it would be somebody else, that this was the likely scenario that the legislature would take it. And how did you come to understand who, who was conveying this information during the calls? I don't, I don't remember who, who it was. I mean, there was never just one person, uh, I don't think. Did you understand someone in the senior staff of the chamber was speaking to someone in the attorney general's office at this time? Yes, that was my understanding. And do you know who was speaking to the Attorney General's office during this time? Not 100%, but I, I believe Melissa DeRosa had told me that she had spoken with the AG. And what did Ms. DeRosa tell you about her conversations with the Attorney General? Just that. Just that it was part of the process of figuring out what the process would be. Um, did she tell you anything else about her conversations with the Attorney General? Not that I can recall. Um, why don't you take out the smaller binder that we previously marked as an exhibit? Okay. And if you look on um, what is the first page of the texts on February 28th at um, 433, you write to Mr. Rosa what happened to the statement. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about why you wrote that? Vaguely that I had been cut out of the loop of what was being done on a statement and I was concerned because I wanted to be able to get some comfort that this was being handled uh, in a way that would respect what I was worried about. 
Um, and is the next text, Melissa DeRosa says to you, I'm on with the AG. Does this refresh your recollection that it was Ms. DeRosa who spoke to the Attorney General? Um, I, I don't believe that AG referred to anything else. Not to be cute, I'm saying, you know, uh, it doesn't refresh my recollection. Do you remember anyone else saying that they were having conversations with the Attorney General or the Attorney General's office other than Mr. Rosa? No, not specifically. Did Governor Cuomo tell you that he had had conversations with the Attorney General? Not that I remember. Or anyone in the Attorney General's office? Not that I remember. I can't say he didn't. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I don't remember him telling me that. If you turn to tab 17, we'll mark that as the next exhibit. 17? Yep. Okay. Um, do you recall that this is the statement that was issued by Governor Cuomo on February 28th? I accept it as that. Okay. Um, so there was a statement issued on the 27th, and then another one gets issued on the 28th. What's your understanding of why the two statements? I don't have any recollection of why they went from one to another. Do you have any recollection of there being discussion that there needed to be another statement and why there needed to be another statement? I mean, generally, there was you know, general dissatisfaction um, about this. I mean, clearly, the story wasn't going away, um, and what Andrew was saying was not being accepted as the final word on it. So I know that. Um, I'll represent to you that in an original draft and those two documents we were looking at, this statement included a line of the governor saying he was embarrassed. This final statement does not include that language. Do you remember any discussion about removing the statement about the governor being embarrassed from his public statement? I don't recall anything other than what we reviewed earlier on an email thread where somebody said that a line should come out. I don't know if that was the embarrassed line. That was a line about inappropriate touching. Do you remember any conversation about the embarrassed no, line? No, okay. not specifically. Um, and you'll see in this final statement, it does say on the second page, to be clear, I never inappropriately touched anybody and I never propositioned anybody. You see that? Yes. Do you remember why it is that the line about I never inappropriately touched anybody ended up in the final statement? Uh, no. Was there any discussion you were a part of where the governor was asked whether he had ever inappropriately touched anyone? I don't remember that exact question being asked. Something like that question? I don't remember in any of the group calls a vetting of Andrew being done. Not with me there. With you present, no one vetted any Not of the statements to my the governor was making. Say the last part again. In your presence, no one vetted any of the statements the governor was making as to whether they were true or not. You mean in the statements? Yeah. Yes. People wanted it all to be true, what was going to be in the statement. Okay. Um, that was obviously a concern. So what was discussed about how the sentence, I never inappropriately touched anybody, how the group got comfortable that was true if they didn't vet the governor on that statement? I have reason to believe that people individually had spoken to the governor. And he had said that he didn't, he, he, I remember him saying that he didn't do what was alleged. I don't know how people individually got comfortable with this, though. And you said you have reason to believe that individual people spoke with the governor. What's your reason to believe that? Because he was talking to everybody all the time. One-on-one? -on -one. Uh, groups, one-on-one. -on -one, you know, and every... who, who are the people that you believe individually spoke to the governor about whether he had inappropriately touched anybody? I don't know, specifically. I don't. I just wouldn't be surprised if they were happening. But you don't actually know that they were happening? I don't know for, as a matter of fact, that anyone called him and asked him about what had been done and not done, other than his lawyers. At, at this time, so the February 27th, 28th time period, did you reach out to any of your sources? Not that I recall.
Let's look back at um, the smaller binder of your text messages with Mr. Rosa. Mm -hmm. So this is on, uh, now we're on March 1st, after the governor's statement at tab 17 has been made public. And you wrote to Ms. DeRosa, here's what he should have said. I have carefully considered Ms. Bennett's statement and my own conduct. I don't dispute that our conversation was as she reports. I also do not dispute that my words and supervisory position may have created a hostile work environment. I apologize to Ms. Bennett and will promptly seek to personally communicate my apology to her. I also apologize to the people of New York State who have a right to better conduct for their governor. This will not happen again. See that? Yes, ma'am. Why did you write this? Because that's what I thought he should say. And that's what he didn't say, right? It is not exactly what he said, no. Okay. And so why, after the governor had made his public statement on the 28th, did you send this to Ms. DeRosa? Because I was asked about what I thought about the statement. Who asked you that? I think it may be Melissa DeRosa or, or Andrew or both. Okay. And um, did you have a conversation with uh, Governor Cuomo about what you thought about his February 28th statement? I can't remember a specific conversation, Counselor, but absolutely I was in contact with him at every inflection point. And what do you remember conveying to him about what you thought about his February 28th statement? You have to tell the truth. You have to not be coaxed to tell the truth. You have to own what was wrong. You have to apologize. And you have to tell people that you've learned from this as a leader. And you have to act like a leader in this situation. And I think what you just read reflects that. Okay. Um, if the governor had issued the statement that, that you wrote, would it have been true? I don't know that this was specifically just from my head. Um, I was often given suggestions by people about what he should have said or not said or why wasn't it said like this, or whatever, both from inside his team and outside of his team. So I may have lifted this from one of those uh, suggestions to me, from one of them or an earlier draft, but this does reflect what I thought he should have said, just to not take too much credit, that's all. Um, do you recall from whom you might have lifted this? No, not, not specifically. Generally? I mean, it, would have, it was either, you know, one of my outside, you know, PR friends who would unsolicited send me, you know, everybody was commenting on this. Everybody was following it. Everybody had something to say. And there were also these divisions within his team. And I am often seen as a fair broker of who you can go to about Andrew. Um, so I just, I don't want to give myself too much credit. That's all. Right. I'm just trying to understand who you think might have contributed to this draft. Uh, Josh, Steve Cohen, Liss. Um, I probably haven't mentioned her enough when it came to people who were of the school of thought of handling this the way I've suggested. Um, that, that could have been uh, the universe. And when you say Liss, you mean Liz Smith? I'm sorry. Yes. That's okay. Just for the Liz Liss report. Smith, L-I-S. So you think those individuals contributed to this draft? They may have. May have. Okay. And if this draft had been issued by Governor Cuomo, would it have been true? I believe so. Okay. And so the statement that the governor did not dispute that his conversation was as Ms. Bennett reported would have been true? I think, I mean, obviously this is something for Andrew to answer, um, but this was my reckoning of what needed to be said. I wasn't present for the conversations. Um, I, I don't even have a transcript of the conversations, so there's no way for me to know what was said or not said. Um, that's for Andrew to figure out whether or not he can say this and be comfortable with it. I'm just saying it was my suggestion of what I would have liked to have heard. But as of March 1st, based on the many conversations that you had been a part of, you believed that the statement, I don't dispute that our conversation was as she reports coming from Governor Cuomo, would have been a true statement. I think he would say, I don't dispute that our conversations made her feel the way she says. I think that he would probably draw that distinction. I wasn't part of the conversation. Uh, I just think that my reflex is 
to not question the accusation yourself, other than to say whether it's true or untrue. Let the process be the determination of those specific questions. And then at the end of the process, if you don't agree with the determinations, well, now, now that's, what our, um, that's what our dynamic should be. So that's where my head was. I don't know that Andrew would say that he agrees with this statement. I was asked what I thought he should say. That's what this is. I, I get that. What I'm trying to understand is, was, were you part of any conversation where Governor Cuomo ever said words in some or, some or in substance, I didn't say what Ms. Bennett says I said? Yes. Okay. And what did he say he did not say to Ms. Bennett? He never, he says he never said anything about being with her or that she should be with him, you know, nothing like that. And anything that was said like that was very jokey and never a pass. Okay. So he never said to her anything like, you should be with me or I should be with you. His suggestion was that he never said anything like that uh, and anything like it wasn't seriously said that way, that that was never his intention and that she, he thought she understood that, that this wasn't a romantic thing for him. I, I understand the intention part. What I'm trying to understand is what did the governor say to you were the words he did not say to Ms. Bennett? I don't remember ever having that specific conversation. Okay. And then you write on the next page, if you flip it over, mm -hmm. um, you annotated the statement that's reflected at, at tab 17. Do you see that? Yes, this goes more to what I was saying about the process of the collective. These may have been things that were passed on to me um, by other uh, people. Comments other people may have passed on to you. Yes. Um, do you have any understanding of whether your annotations were shared with Governor Cuomo? No. Um, you said in, in the, the annotation, you say no one says he intended to offend or harm. What he is, he's accused of is creating a hostile work environment which is judged objectively by the natural meaning of his words and conduct, not by what he now says he intended. Did you convey in some and substance to Governor Cuomo that, that information? Yes, I don't think I wrote this actual part. I mean, it's a little bit more sophisticated than my general vernacular and, and thought process would be. Um, but um, yes, I've had the conversation with my brother on numerous occasions that it doesn't just matter what you thought or intended. Um, who do you think wrote this? I'm not really sure. It, look, it, my, I, don't, I don't think I've ever phrased, I've written this idea a thousand times, you know, in the last 25 years of uh, journalism. Um, I don't, these are not, this is not my normal phrasing, um, but I do agree with the idea and I thought it was an important suggestion for them. Could the author of this have been anyone other than Steve Cohen, Liz Smith, Josh Vlasto, or Jeff Pollack? It's possible. Who else could it have been? I mean, he had lawyers, uh, you know, who were on the call sometimes. It could have come from one of them. Were you speaking to his lawyers? Only if they were in that mix of the conference calls that from time to time I was asked to listen in on in part or in whole. Okay. Did any of the, the lawyers separately reach out to you? No. Okay. Anyone else it could have been who wrote this? Not that I'm aware of. And the next annotation, whoever wrote this wrote, it's perhaps true that work colleagues are personal friends, but most supervisors know that many issues may arise from personal friendships with work subor subordinates. Did you ever convey that in some or substance to Governor Cuomo? Yes. What did you say? That, you know, I mean, this grows out of the understanding that just because you think it's one way, there are two things. One, you're not equals. And two, you could have it wrong. Most of these people are of an entirely different generation from my brother. Um, you know, he is a man from a certain ethnic background in a certain place in a certain time. And none of the people involved in this approximate any of that. When you conveyed to your brother um, that they were, he was not equals with the women that were making allegations against him, what did you mean by that? They work for you. 
And what did you tell him that meant? That there's a, what it means, which is that there's a power dynamic at play. Meaning that he has more power than they do? Of course. Let's turn to tab 18. Okay. Okay. Um, have you had a chance to look at this now? What are yours, is your understanding of what this is? It is a set of ideas about what the governor may or may not say with respect to the allegations. At a press conference, right? Yes. And who, to your understanding, prepared the first draft that is reflected on pages 10079 and 10080 and 10081? I don't know. Um, it came from Stephanie Benton. Stephanie Benton did not prepare the draft. Okay. If it came from Ms. Benton and it was not prepared uh, by her, who is the likely author then? I don't know. Is it the governor? He would almost undoubtedly have been a part of the drafting process. Um, and do you recall commenting on this? I do not. Um, again, I was most often a peripheral figure. Uh, I'm the brother. Yes, I understand the media, but to be clear, everyone in that room understands the media. They all have media contacts. There is no division between politics and media. We all know each other. So the idea that I was there because I'm the media person is just not true. They had multiple media experts who had much closer connections to the people who were covering this than I do. You know, I mean, my beat, my show, I'm not about New York State politics. You know, I mean, I didn't even cover the mayoral race recently. You know, I just, I, other people were. I, I, I got why it was somewhat germane, but, you know, this is not my world. So it shouldn't be surprising that I didn't have a heavy hand in a lot of these things because I didn't. Um, I understand your perspective on what your role was, but with respect to the preparation for the governor for the March 3rd press conference, did you offer any thoughts or insights guidance, opinions about this being what he would say? I don't remember including anything in any email about this. I spoke to my brother about it. Okay. What did you tell your brother? Tell the truth. Don't have people have to push you on things. Every time somebody has to ask you a question about something specific, is an opportunity you had to get out in front of this that wasn't taken. And that this is not a competition. This is not you versus the accuser. And you don't phrase it that way, and you avoid any implication of that. That was my biggest set of concerns for him in terms of how this was handled. Everything else to me was just verbiage. Um, in this verbiage on page 10080, you'll see there's a reference on the third paragraph from the bottom. And it says, I've asked the Attorney General to engage an independent professional firm to review any allegations. In the meantime, I want to take additional action. I'm going to bring in a private firm to train all my staff, myself included, as to appropriate workplace interaction. Did that happen to your knowledge? I don't know. Did you discuss that with Governor Cuomo? In cursory fashion, that it was good to do as much as possible to show that something's been learned here and improved. And to your understanding, was that followed up on? I don't know, Counselor. Was it discussed with any members of the senior staff whether that training would happen? I don't know. 
those aren't conversations I would have likely been a part of. Mm -hmm. The governor ultimately did not say this at his press conference. Do you know why that is? I do not. Um, he then he went on, the, this on, goes on to say, I also want to engage a firm that would be available to any employee who wants to make a complaint but may feel uncomfortable going through formal government channels. Were you part of any discussion with Governor Cuomo about that suggestion? No. Um, were you part of any conversations with the senior staff or the consultants about that suggestion? Not that I recall. That ultimately does not get said at the March 3rd press conference. Do you understand why it wasn't? I do not. Do you feel that the size font on this is a little small? It is incredibly small, okay, Mr. Good. Cuomo, but I have yes. no control over that. Counselor, I just want <laughs> I ask because... You uh, should not be concerned. I'm glad that it's not me. If there's anything that you would like to read and that you cannot read, let us know and we will figure out a way to make it more legible. Everything has been legible. Okay. Uh, at some point, uh, on, on, so this is all on uh, March 1st. On March 1st, you went on the air on your show uh, and made a statement regarding coverage of the allegations against your brother. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And what prompted you to make that statement? <sighs> Noise. What do you mean by noise? Media noise. Noise about what? About me not covering or covering my brother. I mean, there's questions being raised about whether you were going to cover or were not going to cover the allegations against your brother. Yes. And were there questions being raised about whether CNN was going to cover the allegations raised against your brother or not? Not legitimate ones. Okay. But those were being raised? Not legitimately. Okay. But they were being raised? And that was part of why you In went my business. There. Yeah. There are different kinds of questions. Sure. There are rhetorical questions. There are questions that are being asked just to be antagonistic. Mm -hmm. There are questions that are said for informational basis. Uh, and there are questions that have a concern of policy. And I don't think this checked any box other than the antagonism. CNN was always going to cover it. They had always covered my brother for better and worse. Okay. Before you made this statement, um, we'll, let's turn to tab 19, and we can mark that as the next exhibit. This is a... Did you say 19, Counselor? I did. I don't have a 19. Well, that's 19. fascinating. I have a 19. Apparently, I am the only... But I'm happy for you to read me what 19 is. Yeah, I don't have a 19. Either. Here's 19. Okay. We'll mark that loose sheet this of paper. This is the transcript <laughs> of my statement. On uh, which CNN. Which you can have, which I know. Okay. Um, prior to making that statement, did you speak to anybody in the executive chamber about the fact that you would be making the statement? Probably. Uh, I don't remember specifically who. Um, I'm sure I told my brother. Okay. And what did you tell your brother? That I'm going to uh, get in front of this and squash this noise because it's absurd. And what did, your, uh, what did Governor Cuomo say in that conversation? My brother has a lot of regret that I've had uh, this negatively affect me. Um, doesn't feel good to have your family be scrutinized for something that's about you, let alone when that scrutiny is patently unfair and being weaponized in ways to hurt you as the primary, you know, which is what Andrew is, and to hurt me. And I know he feels that, and it's, it, it hurts him. And I, I understand that. I would never want to be in his position in, in many regards. But he wish I didn't have to say it. Uh, he wanted to believe that this wasn't about me, it's just about him. And Sadly, it's not the case. Look where I am today. So the sum and substance of what you just described to me, that's what Governor Cuomo conveyed to you about you having to go on the air to make this statement? Yeah. Okay. And you said you, you maybe talked to other members of the executive chamber. Can you recall who? I, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if I spoke to Josh or Liz or Melissa uh, about this. Can you remember the substance of any of those conversations? Just that I was doing it. Um, they, too, believe that 
you know, this isn't really necessary, nobody really believes this, you know, everybody gets it, but it's the nature of the game I'm in. Um, you can go ahead and, and put that aside. The, I'm sorry, what you I said, said you, you can, can go ahead and put that, that aside. Oh, there you go. Or I can hand it back to me. <laughs> Just so I don't lose it in my binder. Thank you. Um, so the press conference that we've been talking about occurs on, on March 3rd. And you said uh, previously that you were involved in um, some calls where Governor Cuomo was prepared for that press conference. Um, if you can turn to tab 20, and we'll mark this as the next exhibit. There's behind the blue tab, there's, an, there's a, another document. There you go. Okay. Okay. Other than with your counsel, have you seen these two documents? No. Okay. Um, when you were uh, involved in the preparation for the governor, did anyone ask him if he forcibly kissed Miss Boylan? I don't remember it specifically, as I said to you earlier. You don't remember him being asked that question specifically? I don't. I don't remember specific um, vetting of the governor on calls that I was on. Okay. Maybe to make this more efficient for all of us, if you go back before the tab, there's a series of questions uh, that Ms. Smith proposes the governor be asked uh, to practice. Mm -hmm. If you look through the list, can you tell us whether you recall Governor Cuomo in any conversation you've been a part of responding to any of these questions? Just walk through the list. In the practice sessions? Or in the practice sessions, yeah, not in the actual press conference. I was never in a practice session. In the preparation for the March 3rd conference, that's what I mean by practice. I never was part of any of this. Okay. In any conversation you've ever been a part of with the governor, did he talk about whether he had touched the legs, arms, or torso of Miss Boylan? He told me generally that he never kissed her or touched her in any way that was inappropriate. Um, were you part of any conversations in which the governor addressed whether he had told Ms. Boylan that he wanted to play strip poker? No. Were you part of any conversations in which the senior staff attempted to find individuals who might have been on a flight with Governor Cuomo when he made a comment about strip poker to Ms. Boylan? No, I don't recall that specifically. Do you recall there being a statement issued from individuals who were on a flight with Governor Cuomo saying whether or not they had heard him discuss strip poker with Ms. Boylan? I'm vaguely familiar. I don't remember if they issued a statement or they, they were interviewed about it. or I, I, I didn't pay much attention to that. But you weren't part of those conversations? No. Okay. I wasn't on the flight. I would. No, part of the conversations about that statement being oh, issued or finding uh, those people no, or tracking I, no, down the flight information. No, not that I recall. Okay. Um, were you part of any conversations in which Governor Cuomo uh, discussed whether Lindsay Boylan looked like a better, better looking version of Lisa Shields? No. Were you part of any conversations in which Governor discussed whether he called Miss Boylan Lisa? No. Okay, that's why I wanted to go through the list. That's what I meant by the list. So for any of the, the remaining questions, were you part of any conversations in which the governor answered these questions? I've heard my brother speak to several of these questions, but I was never part of a practice session where it happened semi auteur you know, where they took mm -hmm. him through this. I've heard him say that he had no reason to believe that the women who had come forward had, but that he wouldn't be surprised if other ones did once he was convinced that it was a political pile-on. Um, I've heard him say that he has regrets about a lot of things. Uh, you have a long history of saying inappropriate things to women, like the time you repeatedly told a young female that you wanted to see her eat the whole sausage. Um, you know, I remember him referring to that as something that he was completely flummoxed by. 
that it was taken so grossly out of context. But again, in his position, people hear things differently, uh, and there's potentially different standards. So to answer your question best I can, no, I don't remember any recitation of these interrogatories. Yes, I have heard my brother address several of these. Um, let's go back to the one about regrets. So you said your brothers told you has lots of regrets. I think that the topic of the question was actually regrets about the language you have used towards women in the workplace. Did you ever hear your brother talk about whether he had regrets about the language he used towards women in the workplace? Yes. And what did he say? That he had regrets. And what did he say were his regrets? That anything he said that made people feel in a way that he didn't intend was wrong. And he has to learn from it and be different. In those conversations, did the Governor Cuomo acknowledge making comments about women's appearance? Not specifically. Generally? I, mean, I think that my understanding was that that's what he was referring to, is that anything that he had said to them about their lives or their person that came across in a way that he says he never would have intended, he regrets it. Behind the blue tab um, is a series of draft questions. I know you've said you've never seen this particular document. Have you ever seen any version of this or any document in which draft uh, answers for press conference questions were prepared for Governor Cuomo for the March 3rd meeting? Not that I can recall. Okay. After the March 3rd, did you watch the March 3rd press conference? No. Did you watch it after it happened, like on tape? No. Did you speak to anybody after the press conference about how it went? Yes. Who did you speak to? Many people from different aspects of my life. Obviously, this was something of incredible importance in terms of getting how people processed it. Okay, let's start with the governor. Did you speak to Governor Cuomo about how the press conference went? Later. Uh, later, meaning when? After I had spoken to other people. Okay, who'd you speak to first? I mean, it's going to be hard to identify, but anybody I could. Can you give me buckets, maybe, then? My family. Mm -hmm. People I know in the business. Other political people. You know, people were coming to me. Everybody was weighing in on all this. So you spoke to family members, you spoke to other, other reporters? Um, less so. I tried to never approach anybody who was covering the story. I didn't want to make them uncomfortable, you know? There's only one of me in the business. And I'm not saying that in a bragging way. I'm saying whose brother is this, you know, big shot in politics. And I really just never wanted to make anybody feel like I was pushing up on them about something. So yeah, if they called me and they said whatever they were going to say, then th that would be fine. But um, I was just asking people who I respected their opinions, or I was asking people in the street. You know, I mean, I was just trying to get a sense of, you know, how's this going for him? You said political people. Were you talking to any politicians? I mean, not specifically, you know what I mean? But you know, I interview them every night on my show, so the idea of somebody saying, you know, I say, uh, you know, thank you, June Kim, for being on primetime tonight. And June Kim then says, hey, you know, tell your brother I said, uh, you know, this or that, you know, that. Right, but were you outreaching to any no. politicians? Okay. Um, so what did you, after no doing. No offense, counselor. <laughs> He's been waiting. Um, other than, after you had those conversations, what did you say to Governor Cuomo about the press conference? I was talking to him brother to brother, just trying to keep his head in the game. Um, and to, you know, ironically, I was, my message to him is try not to s listen to too many people, even though I was doing the exact opposite, but I'm in a different position. Um, and just Brother, brother to brother, I was telling him just to keep his head and listen to what he knows is right and that this is going to be long and hard. What did you convey to him about public perception about how the press conference had gone? It's mixed, you know, like everything else. People see things in partisan politics through such colored lenses now that really 
it's so fractional, you know, that like a third of the people will never go bad on you. I don't think that's as true on the Democratic side. I know that's not relevant. But a third will never be for you. And maybe you're lucky if there are a third of people with open minds on any of these issues that are willing to listen to anything. Did you give him any advice about what to do next? I don't remember specifically after the press conference doing that. Um, let's turn back to the texts um, that are in the smaller uh, exhibit binder with Melissa DeRosa. Um, on March 4th, you see on the, turn to March 4th. Yes. Okay. There's a text message from Melissa DeRosa to you um, that is from, her, it looks like she captured a email message or text message conveying that Ms. Bennett was going to do an on-camera uh, interview and then she said thoughts to you. Mm -hmm. You wrote call. Do you remember speaking to Ms. DeRosa? About Didn't I send that to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Counselor. That's okay. Didn't I say to her thoughts? You're correct. You said thoughts and then you wrote called. Did you communicate with Ms. DeRosa uh, about Ms. Bennett's on-camera interview? Uh, no, and I didn't see it. It was more informational, like, what, you know, like, what, what do you make of this? Like, I was asking her. Mm -hmm. What did Ms. DeRosa say she was making of it? I, I don't remember other than her being concerned, obviously. And then you wrote, I have a lead on the wedding girl. Yes. What does that mean? Um, plain reading that someone called me who knew the, the bride's family who suggested that the who was relevant in the situation. That and that my friend had heard that maybe she had been put up to it. I then had a phone call with Melissa and or Josh and was told that this was the wedding of one of their people uh, and that this complaint had happened right then, had been heard from her, and it's been always there. It didn't just come up. Okay, let me try to unpack that. <laughs> so the woman that we're speaking about, um, do you recall her name is Anna Roosh? Yes. Okay, and so you had heard uh, from someone some information about Anna Roosh. Who is the person you heard the information from? A source. Um, can you tell me who the source is? I don't know how that's relevant. Well, I'm asking because it, it's relevant to the credibility of the individual. So who is the person who you got the information from? Is this from? a journalistic source? No. Okay, so who is the inform His name is... Can you, for the court reporter, can you spell the last name? conveyed to you that he had heard that Ms. Roush had been put up to it in part because I get he had heard yes. that he that heard. may be the case. Okay. And then I then learned that this was the wedding of one of the members of Andrew's team and that he or someone close to him had said no, she complained early on about this and it has always been consistent. So that's that. Meaning she had complained when it happened. Yeah. When the governor had touched her at the wedding. Or soon thereafter, yeah. Okay. And that what she described about her experience was consistent. Meaning what she was telling the yes. press now was consistent with what she said at the time. Yes. And who told you that? I forget. Either Melissa or Josh, you know, or one of them who knew whoever's wedding it was. Okay. Did they tell you they knew this because they had been at the wedding? No. How did they, um, do you know how they knew that Ms. Roush had made her complaint at or around the time of, of the wedding? I don't remember if, it was, I, I think it was the groom was part of the team. I could be wrong. But it was from them. It was from whoever was on the team who got married, who had heard this, who told them. I see. So 
Okay. And he had told them contemporaneously to the wedding or somewhere on or around. That was my understanding. I gotcha. Okay. Let's turn to tab 21. Um, tab 21 reflects a, an email chain between you and a number of people about a forthcoming Washington Post article. Mm -hmm. See that? Yes. What do you remember um, about discussions you had about the forthcoming Washington Post article? I don't remember that I had any conversations. Did you talk to anybody about um, Karen Hinton? I don't remember. I don't remember. I didn't talk to anybody specifically about Karen Hinton. I remember hearing about Karen Hinton on some of their calls and their reactions to it. Okay. So tell us about what you heard uh, on the calls uh, that you participated in about Karen Hinton. My brother told me this never happened, um, that she had gone bad on him, to use uh, his words, and she was known uh, by people to have uh, an animus against him. <sighs> and that that was echoed by, I think, Melissa, who said to me, she hasn't liked your brother for a long time. Did anyone explain to you why it is that Ms. Hinton had gone bad on Governor Cuomo or didn't like him? No, but I was told, not to your question, but if, if you want it, that um, she had a book coming out and that she may or may not have known Lindsey Boylan, and that this could have been concerted action. This was what you learned on the calls with members of the governor's yeah. senior staff and his consultants? Yes. Um, can you recall who conveyed the information about Ms. Hinton's book? Not specifically. Or her connection? I don't even know that I got that from them or that I read it somewhere. Okay. You know, I mean, all of this kind of blends together. And what about the connection, the potential connection to Ms. Boylan? Do you remember where you got that information? No. Might have been Andrew, might have been Melissa or Josh. Can you recall any other information you learned about Ms. Hinton or the allegations Ms. Hinton was making against Governor Cuomo? No, Counselor. Did you discuss with anyone or were you part of any discussions um, relating to a response to Ms. Hinton's allegations? Not that I recall specifically. Um, had you been a part of any discussions where an individual by the name of Anna Liss was discussed? Yes, as long as I'm right about which allegation that is. Okay, so why don't you tell me what you're thinking of when you think of the allegations uh, by Ms. Liss? I'm not sure. Um, so tell me, when I said Ms. Liss, what came to your mind? I just, I've, I know the name. Mm -hmm. I know that she's one of the accusers. Mm -hmm. I don't know specifically which one. Uh, I, know, I know it's not the, uh, the assault um, claim. I know Obviously, she's not the other named people that we've discussed. So she's part of that middle wave of uh, allegations. And I don't mean in any way to diminish her or her claim. I'm just saying, you know, frankly, there are a lot of names to keep straight here. And um, when you say that middle wave, what do you, what do you mean by the middle in, wave? In March, mm -hmm. there started to be this steady uh, succession of complaints, and I believe she was one of those. Annalise was one of those. Okay. And can you remember any conversations you had with senior staff or uh, consultants to the senior staff about Miss Liss? No, not specifically. What about Caitlin? Can you remember during this time period any conversations you had or were a part of with senior staff or consultants about a woman named Caitlin? 
Yes, I remember there being discussion. I mean, it was a very serious accusation. Okay, and, and tell us about what you remember about the conversations about the woman named Caitlin. That this was shocking to them. Uh, Stephanie Benton, I guess, is somehow connected in the office to her. Um, uh, maybe she's her supervisor or they work together or they work for the same supervisor. I don't know how it works. But that they were shocked that she was saying this, that they thought that she had been openly supportive of the governor. I think there may have even been a suggestion that she had criticized women who had come forward, that she was a big fan of the governor and volunteered to work with him. Are you talking about the woman who made allegations that the governor groped her in the executive mansion? Yes. Okay. Do I have the wrong, do I have the wrong? You tell me, do you have an understanding that the woman who has made allegations that the governor groped her in the executive mansion, that her name is Caitlin? Yes. Okay. Is that inaccurate? I'm not going to answer that for you, Mr. Cuomo. Um, why don't we look at uh, the text messages with Mr. Rosa? and turn to um, the ones on March 6th. Okay. Okay. Um, so you see that Melissa DeRosa circulates to you the Washington Post article that we mm -hmm. had just been referring to? Yes. And the text messages? Yeah. I got okay. Um, and then you wrote back, I need all the best facts for is for reporters who can do it. Hello. Can you tell us why you were asking her to get all the best facts? Yes. I believed that, as is somewhat evidenced by our conversation, there's so many women and so many accusations and that they were being blended together and that there was confusion. Um, and I was worried that this wasn't being handled the right way and it's not my job to handle it. Okay, I don't work for the governor. I'm not defending him uh, in this matter. I'm not covering it. You know, this is, this is not what I do. Um, I am worried about my brother and worried that this is being handled the best way it can. And my feeling was that to my basic mantra, you need to tell the truth and get in front of these if you have something to say. And if you have something to own, you need to do that as well. And I didn't see that happening. And what I meant in this text, which may well have been dictated, um, because I do that mm -hmm. uh, fairly often. And we all struggle with the whole thumbs thing and the wrong word. You need to have somebody marshal the universe of facts here and deal with reporters in a way other than, I don't like what you wrote, or you've got it wrong. That doesn't sound well to a reporter's ear. You don't like it, you're not supposed to like it. What did I get wrong? What do I have wrong? What do you have to offer me? That's the way journalism works. I didn't believe that that was happening. And I thought that Melissa needed to have the press people know the universe of facts, have this organized, be respectful to the claims, and answer them that way. And I didn't think it was happening. This was my suggestion to her about that, which we had spoken about on the phone. And what was Mr. Rosa's response to your suggestion? I get it. Did she do it? As far as I know. And so? Actually, that's not true. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I have no idea whether she took my advice or not. Did she get you the best facts? Never. Um, did you convey any of the facts to reporters Never. on the executive chamber's behalf? Sorry to jump the That's question. Okay. Never. Or, or convey any facts to any reporters on the governor's behalf. Never. Okay. Um, on the next day, you see the next text message is actually from the next day. And it says, can Tom Perez call her? Who's Tom Perez? Uh, Tom Perez was the DNC chair. Okay. And how did you come to learn, well, who's the her? I don't know. 
I'll be honest, uh, and looking back, I don't remember what this was about. I know that it wasn't about Andrew. I think he had been on my show, and he was asking for something to, to communicate something, and he was having a hard time getting through the office. And I forget who it was, but I don't remember it being part of this situation. Okay. And it was just me. Melissa, you know, can get somebody through to whoever they need to talk to in the office. Okay. And the next... Um text message is uh, almost impossible to read. No, but I, I've reviewed it. Oh, uh, you've reviewed it before? Yes. Okay. Um, if you want to show me something, that's well, fine. But. No, I'll ask you, so, but you've deleted these text messages, right? Yeah, it was in the preparations with the attorneys. Okay. Um, so you know that the next text message is a statement by Hazel Dukes, is that right? Yeah, I, please. Sure, we'll mark this as the next exhibit so that you can Thank see you. the full text message. Mr. Kim. <laughs> I got a few words. Um, and Melissa DeRosa sends you this statement. Mm -hmm. See that, right? Um, and then in response in the text message, you write, um, Hesty used our language at least. What do you mean by our language? The language that the... Uh, governor and his team were hoping for in terms of embracing process. Okay, and so was there language or or discussion about uh, about pol politicians um, embracing process that you were a part of? Uh, yes. And tell us about those conversations. That I mean, I believe that that was the only course was once you had credible allegations, there has to be process. There has to be investigations. They have to be looked at. And that's the best thing that a Democrat can ask for. Um, and that this was, at that point, somebody who matters uh, politically saying there should be process. To your understanding, was actual language prepared and, and provided to politicians for use in statements? I've never heard anything like that. Okay. Were you involved in discussions about who should be called and who shouldn't be called? Never. I don't even know the players. I mean, I do now, but I, I didn't then. Um, if you turn to the next page on the same, in the text messages with Ms. Rosa, this is still on March 7th. Mm -hmm. um, she writes, hey, rumor going around from Politico, one to two more people coming out tomorrow. Can you check your sources? And you wrote on it. Did you check your sources? I was frequently in contact when we would hear word that there were other people coming out or there was more to be learned about somebody. I would talk to other journalists to hear what they had heard. And on this occasion, do you remember what you heard? Um, no, I believe that I didn't hear. As you wrote in the text, no one has heard that yet. Oh, I apologize. Um, uh, why don't we go off the record? Okay. Times 2, 11 p.m. includes media 3, off the record. Ms. Groom, I didn't realize. Time now is 2.23 p.m. This begins media four on the record. Uh, Mr. Cuomo, if you can um, put the text messages in front of you that are contained in the separate binder, the ones between you and Mr. Rosa, we'll continue talking about those. Um, okay. If you look on uh, March 7th at 9.29, uh, Mr. Rosa shares an article in the Daily Mail uh, related to Alec Baldwin discussing cancel culture. You see that? Yes. And then you wrote back, my friend asked him to do it very close to him. Can you explain what you meant by that? Yes. This is a little inaccurate. Um, I know Alec Baldwin. Um, so does Andrew. Um, I have a very good friend who's named here who called me and said, Alec wants to talk about cancel culture or political correctness. I asked him not to. I said, tell him stay out of it. Uh, it's not necessary. He said, well, he's going to do it. 
and I think it's a good idea for him to do it. He wants to talk about these things, fine. I said, all right, well, that's my take on it. And that's what it was. And when Melissa then told me that it had happened, I was not aware, but I did know its origin. And what was your perspective on why it, it shouldn't have been done? Or... Is your microphone on? Sorry, it's not. It shouldn't count against my time. OK. Um, what was your perspective on why it shouldn't be done? Um, you OK with my answer? Did you pick it all up? OK. Um, I wasn't in favor of it happening because I didn't think that Alec Baldwin weighing in on this one way or the other was necessarily helpful or respectful to the situation. Um, and I was trying to help my brother, and it just didn't seem that helpful to me. Did you have any conversations with Governor Cuomo in relation to the allegations of sexual harassment made against him about cancel culture? Yes. And tell us about those conversations. I think cancel culture is real. Um, so does my brother. And I advised him that you cannot ignore these, that it's not going to go away, uh, not in our society, not in our media culture, and not in your party, that they're going to come on this. And you have to be aware of that. And that's why you can't go after your accusers. It's not right. It's not allowed. The only path is process. That's the only path. Have things investigated. Have somebody independent who looks at this and let people judge what they find. What did Governor Cuomo say in response to your perspective on cancel culture and the relation of it to the allegations of sexual harassment made against him? He believed, he believes a much larger version of this, that it's not just generally cultural, it's specific to him in politics. And that this is an entire string theory of people coming out to get him head to toe, soup to nuts. And that they are all connected in some way? Certainly in uh, his mind, and again, I'm sure you'll have the chance to speak uh, to the governor. He believes that all of the energy around this, the politicians, the media, that it's all part of what happens in politics. I understand. May I asked a poor question. Had Governor Cuomo expressed to you that the women who have made allegations against him are all connected in some way? Not specifically. That it's more about once it had been made okay or popular to come out against him and that people would get attention for it, he believes that that drove allegations. Was there any discussion you had with Governor Cuomo about whether multiple women coming forward made it safer for women to come forward with allegations? No. Um, if you turn to the next page in the tweet, a uh, text, sorry, um, there's a screenshot that Mr. Rocha shared with you. You see that? Yes. And then you respond, why do you guys like this so much? What do you remember about that? Counselor, as, as I've said, I was often out of the loop. And this had been sent to me by more than one person. And I didn't understand why they were sending this around. I didn't, I didn't understand. Please understand my sensitivity um, to these things. To me, uh, this was devastating, what was happening. Um, and it was embarrassing. And it was hurtful. And it was shameful. And I just didn't understand any kind of preoccupation with what's being said by somebody about something else in this political insider yip yap. I just I didn't understand why they'd be paying any mind to any of that. That's what that was. But then Melissa DeRosa writes back, brush back, and you wrote week late. What did you mean by week late? Week late meaning, you know, you're you're like indicating a state of play that you is way past you already. The idea that this was going to go away or that it wasn't that significant and that I was exaggerating it, that it meant more to me because of 
my own personal feelings or because I'm too close to my brother and my sensitivity, which is not true. Not true. Do you remember being on the phone with either um, Governor Cuomo or, or Mr. Rosa on March 7th? No. And then you texted, no resign, no resign, no resign, and then she said, no resign. Do you remember what the context was for those texts? Yes. What was the context? Whether he should resign. But was there some conversation that you were a part of where resignation was being discussed? Yes. Tell us about that conversation. There were politicians calling for my brother to resign, and he was considering that. Tell us about your conversations with Governor Cuomo about his consideration of resignation. I told him, if you have done nothing that you believe was wrong, don't resign because resigning is you saying that you did something wrong. Don't do it. What did Governor Cuomo say to you or his thoughts at that point in time about resignation? He went back and forth. Did he ever say to you in words or um, in substance that he believed he had done something wrong? Not that warranted him no longer holding office. Right. It, regardless of whether it warranted him holding office or not, did he convey to you in words or in substance that he believed he had done something wrong? Not in that way. What, why did he convey it? He had regret. What did he convey regret about? Anything that people took in a way that he didn't atten intend. Was there anything specifically that he said that he regretted saying or doing? I don't remember it specifically that way. Um, do you know someone by the name of Lindsay Nielsen? No. A reporter? No. Um, on March 9th, the texts continue, and your eyesight uh, and mine is probably not going to be good enough to read what that says. But if you look at the third page of this little handout oh. that I gave you, we've just blown up what is in that text box from March 9th. And there it goes. It's page three. And Mr. Rosa texted you, um, any allegation made either directly or indirectly is being forwarded to June Kim and Ann Clark in real time. We are grateful that the AG has chosen two experienced and diligent prosecutors to lead up this review and look forward to cooperating fully so that New Yorkers have all the facts and at its conclusion. The governor's previous statement that he has never touched anyone inappropriately stands. You see that? Yes. She wrote thoughts and you wrote lose last. What did you mean by that? I believe that lip service to allegations is disrespectful. So if you have something that you want to say, say it. Um, but the governor's previous statement that he has never stands. Well, either you're telling us the truth or you're not telling us the truth. And to me, that sounds like political speak, you know, like media speak. And I don't think that that's the right way to behave in those situations. Yeah. I had said that many times. Did you suggest that that statement, um, that sentence come out of the statement because you had concerns that perhaps the governor had touched someone inappropriately? No. Did you ever have that concern? Yes. When was that? Every time I'd hear an allegation. Did you confront him about those allegations? Yes. And what did he say? No. Um, at some point, did you come to learn uh, that there was an allegation that the governor had groped someone? Uh, in the executive mansion? Yes, we discussed it earlier. Okay, and um, how did you learn about that? I think, as with some of the other ones, either, I think I, I think I heard it from the team that this was going to come out. Okay. Do you I don't think, mm -hmm. I don't think I learned it, I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't think I learned it first in the media. I, I think I heard that it was coming, that I'm not, 100% about that, but I think so. Do you remember who you think you heard um, from that the allegation was coming? Not specifically, but there was a pretty small nucleus of people who were communicating with me. Mm -hmm. Liz, uh, mm -hmm. sorry. No, I was going to ask you who. Go ahead. Liz, 
Josh, uh, Melissa. You know, most of what I learned came from one or more of them. And uh, what did you talk about, if anything, with Governor Cuomo about the allegation that he had groped someone in the executive mansion? Wanting to know what happened. And what did he say? Nothing that he was, he said that he has no idea what's going on here. That um, Caitlin liked him and wanted to work with him and liked working with him and that they had a good relationship and that he didn't understand why she'd say something like this. Did he describe in any more detail what his relationship was with her? No. Were you part of any conversations with the senior staff or consultants where her allegations were discussed? I believe so. And tell us about those discussions. And just, it was, their general belief that this is very serious. This qualified as a potential crime. Um, and I believe there was some discussion about whether or not they had to act on it as such. Um, but I wasn't part of a lot of that. I remember hearing conversations that were obviously well down the road. And again, how they handled it in terms of what they needed to do in terms of reporting or whatever was not my concern. My concern that this was, this was really serious and it had to be treated as serious. It had to be treated the right way. Were you part of any discussions with members of the senior staff or consultants in which the credibility of the woman who made the accusations of groping was discussed? Never as a function of how to attack the credibility of the accuser. The confusion and the lack of understanding of why this happened, I guess generally that goes to whether or not these people believed it, but no. And again, I would never be a part of something like that. It is an impossibility of fact, and it is demonstrably false that I was ever even near a suggestion of anything like that. The confusion that was expressed by members of the senior staff and consultants about the, uh, this accuser, what was the confusion based on? Why would she say this? Did anyone uh, subscribe a potential motive to her? Not that I recall. You, know, you had told us about conversations about people subscribing certain motives to Ms. Boylan. Yes. Were similar conversations had about the woman who accused the governor of groping her in the executive mansion? No. I, I think Caitlin was seen very differently in terms of, you know, disposition and circumstance. And what was different about her disposition and circumstance? Lindsay Boylan was running for office and a known antagonist, um, and Caitlin was not. Anything else you can remember about your conversations with either Governor Cuomo or the senior staff and consultants about the woman who accused him of groping her? Not specifically. Can I yeah, of course. Um, did anyone describe to you how this woman's allegations came to light? No, not that I can recall. Let's go back to the um, text messages, the ones okay. between you and, and Mr. Rosa. Um, so on, uh, you see on March 9th at 3 p.m., Mr. Rosa sends you uh, a link to a Times Union article. I'll represent to you that that's the article um, mm -hmm. about the woman who accused the governor of, yes. of groping her. And then you respond the next day and you say, why didn't you tell him about potential ATU I think it's interview mm -hmm. with six. Can you tell us what that means? Why didn't you tell my brother that this might be happening? That this article might be coming out? That all six accusers at that time may be interviewed at the same time. Was your understanding that there might be an interview with the six accusers together? 
Yeah, I think that's what the piece before it had suggested, or Melissa had told me that. Okay. Um, and then she wrote back, I asked you not to say anything until I talked to him. What, what did you understand her to mean by that? Exactly what it says. And the him is the governor? Yes. And had she asked you not to say anything to Governor Cuomo about a potential interview with the six women? That was not my recollection. What's your recollection? That I had not been told that. That she had not told you not to say anything to Governor yes. Cuomo? Had you said anything to Governor Cuomo? Yes. What would you say? Did you know that the Albany Times Union is sitting down with all six accusers? And what did he say? No. And what was done after that? Nothing. Was there any effort to speak to anyone at the Albany Times Union that you were aware of? No. Were they, to your knowledge, anyone could try to convey the best facts to the Albany Times Union? No, I had nothing to do with anything like that. Were you part of any discussions where that was, where that was communicated? No. Okay. And then you wrote... Um, not, that I, not that I recall. Again, not, yeah. so many conversations, mm -hmm. so many different accusations, so many different media angles, uh, and then the process started in terms of the investigation, and um, emails, and texts, and, you know, and my, my focus was very narrow uh, in terms of just kind of keeping my brother's head straight so that he could deal with what was in front of him and keeping my family calm about this. And that's really my entire motivation here. Did you text with your brother? Uh, he doesn't text, per se. He Blackberry messages. Mess mess messages. Ten messages? Mm, you know what? They may be texts. They show up green. He has a Blackberry. Um, I'm Apple. You know, we're, we're blue. They're green. Um, that's how I communicated him with from time to time, but mostly on the phone. Did you have any communications with him during this time period over message? Yes. Text message? Yes. But you didn't save any of those? No. You have to understand, Counselor, I've had people take my phone in airports. I've been sent very sophisticated hack software. I've been told that there are people trying to get it. Um, I have this two SIM card thing with different phone numbers, you know, to try to alleviate that. I don't do cloud backup. I don't, you know, I mean, it is one of the most frightening propositions for me is that somebody is going to get this or get into it. And people who I told, now you can tell me it's okay. And now, Mr. Cuomo, I appreciate that. I'm just trying to find out what exists and what doesn't. That's my job here, okay? I understand. Um, so then you wrote, um, if you go back to the text messages, that was a day ago. Stop hiding shit. What did you mean by stop hiding shit when you said it to Mr. Rosa? Don't not tell Andrew things. Were there other things that you believe Mr. Rosa was not telling Governor Cuomo that he needed to know about? Not specifically, but there were conversations that he wasn't a part of that I thought it was important for him to stay very locked in on these and what's being said, what it means, and how to act, I thought. Can you give me an example of a conversation that you thought he should have been a part of that he, that he wasn't? This one. You know, me, media appearances um, that were being planned or solicited um, for accusers. He should know about the level of interest in the stories and where it was coming from. Are there any other examples? Not that I can think of specifically. Um, two texts after that you wrote, you need to trust me, Liz, and Jeff Moore, I assume you mean Liz Smith and Jeff Pollack. Yes. Uh, not these other people. Who are the other people you're referring to? This is this big, you know, this is expanding universe of lawyers, uh, lawyer types, and uh, no, disrespect, no, no offense taken. I'm, I'm a lawyer also. <laughs> the, uh, but the, um, my point was this. I was very concerned that this was being handled the right way with the right sensitivity and I don't know why Josh isn't on there because that, you know, he was very much, I thought, important uh, in understanding the right way for this to be. 
And I was very, very, and I am uh, to this moment, very, very worried um, about the implications of this. And this goes to my sensitivity. Did uh, Mr. Velasto ever convey to you that he could no longer be involved in advising uh, you or the group or Governor Cuomo about the allegations of sexual harassment? He never advised me. Or advised the governor? Are we part of the group of people who are advising the governor? Never. Um, he was very involved all along. I believe at one point they were going to have his firm um, become the governor's PR representative. And I don't know what happened with that. But Josh Vlasto was very involved and involved in every level of strategy starting at the beginning. Because as I said, I believe he had some kind of connection to Lindsey Boylan. Mm -hmm. And I know that he felt some sense of guilt about it. When was the last time you spoke to Mr. Blasto about the allegations of sexual harassment and surrounding circumstances? A while ago, months. March, April? Maybe. Do you have an understanding as, well, why haven't you been communicating with Mr. Blasto? Uh, because once this process started to um, escalate and people were getting subpoenas, the guidance kept being, you know, don't, don't get in the way of it. Um, you just made a reference earlier to Mr. Vlasto's, uh, the firm at which he works potentially being retained uh, in connection with these allegations. Do you have any understanding as to why that didn't happen? No. I don't know that it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if it happened or it didn't. You don't know one way or the other? I believe it did not happen. I don't know why. And then after you wrote, uh, then you wrote, we are making mistakes we can't afford. And then uh, she wrote, we heard last night, we all did a call. What did you understand Mr. Rosa to be talking about? I'm not sure. I think a piece coming out or something like that. And was this the Albany Times Union piece? I'm not sure. I mean, all I know is that this was another, this was another event where I wasn't in the loop. Meaning you were not on the call that's being referred to? Yeah. And then you wrote, this will be a step back, not a huge one. What were you referring to? Sounds like my reckoning of some article that came out. Um, do you think this was in reference to the allegations of groping that were made against the governor? No. You don't think this was in reference to that Times Union article? I'm not sure, but I was very concerned about the allegations. And, and why are you certain that this is not in reference to that article? I'm not certain. I don't believe it is, but it, it could be. But that is not how I felt about the allegations. How did you feel about the allegations uh, that the governor had groped someone in the executive mansion? Devastated. Did you convey that to Governor Cuomo? Yeah. And what did he say? Didn't happen. Did he say anything had happened between him and the woman who had alleged that she uh, was groped by him? No, nothing physical, you know, nothing inappropriate, I guess is the umbrella term. Did he ever discuss whether he had touched her in any way? No, no, not in any romantic way or anything like that. Did he discuss touching her in a non-romantic way? Not that I remember specifically, but he may have because with some of these allegations, he would try to understand it and be like, well, I, I hug her all the time, or, you know, we, I hug everybody who's there, or this, you know, that kind of thing. I don't remember it specifically with her, though, no. Did uh, Governor Cuomo ever discuss in your presence or with you uh, conversations he might have had of a sexual nature or with sexual content with the woman who accused him of groping her? No, I never spoke to him about it specifically. Were you part of any conversations where that was addressed? No, I think I read about it. Um, if, you, if you go down um, in the text messages, Mr. Rosa says, no interview, not talking to press, that is update. Did you understand that to be about the woman who had alleged that the governor groped her? No. I just remember that I was trying to understand what was happening. Um, and increasingly, they were... Um, 
not including me. So what did you understand this to be about? No interview, not talking to press? Some, I don't know. No, I, don't, I don't understand it specifically. I would imagine it's something to do with one of the accusers. You don't know which one? I don't. Um, and then you wrote, I think, few. Doesn't make sense, though. I am told lawyer got calls from two people saying she has problems with story and that may want to talk about her. Who did you get that information from? A journalist. Um, but if you want to understand the whole thing, I'll tell you. I just, that was my next question you oh. anticipated. Go for uh, it. Uh, so starting with the text before it, I didn't understand why any accuser wouldn't give an interview uh, or why they wouldn't do the interview with the six. I didn't understand why that would have gone away. It didn't make sense to me um, from a journalist perspective. Unless they had a booking issue or couldn't get everybody together at the same time, it didn't make sense why the Albany Times Union would let that go. Um, it's, it's such a powerful mechanism uh, for having people understand, you know, having numbers of people coming and telling their story is very powerful. So there's that. Then I got a call from a journalist who said that he had heard this about it, uh, about that Caitlin, and I don't say this with any judgment, but that she'd in a, and that they, you know, not surprisingly, there, there was some bad blood and that he might talk. Um, and I asked, you know, like, how do we know? And her lawyer was like some guy on a billboard or something like that. And I, I just, it seemed, it seemed shady to me that, you know, I would pass along information when I got it, you know, cause they were in the dark all the time. They never knew that this other complaint was coming back. They'd say there are no more complaints. And then there was another complaint. Um, so if I heard that one was coming or I heard something about, the um, nature of it, I would tell them, this is what I'm being told about this. Um, I thought that was the only responsible thing to do. But very often I didn't believe it. You know what I mean? Like just because I hear something about you doesn't mean it's true. Um, so I would qualify things like that almost always on the phone. And sometimes these would reflect secondary or iterations or reiterations of a point that was a little shorthanded. And that's what was going on there. Did you speak to anyone on the phone about the information you learned uh, from the journalist about the woman who had accused the governor of growth? My recollection is that yes, and that I didn't buy it. That I didn't think that, it just didn't, didn't feel right. Didn't Sorry, feel. What part didn't you buy? I, don't, I didn't buy that the knew something and was gonna come out and talk. It just sounded to me like, that's what you say when you're involved in something, you know, to make yourself relevant. Like that's, that's was my suspicion. Um, and I'm actually a little surprised they even put it in writing because ordinarily I would say that to somebody <coughs> because my concern is once I write it to you, you are going to forget how I meant it and you may now send it to somebody else. You may repeat it to somebody else and you may add context that I never gave you or suggested to you. I like to control what I'm going to tell somebody. Is that why you told Mr. Rosa to delete the thread now? Yeah, delete it, you know, d delete it. Um, but going back to the text message uh, where it said, I am told lawyer got calls from two people. Right. Who did you understand the two people were? <sighs> um, I didn't know. Did not, you? not like journalists, you know, that this was just stink. You know, this was stink. And, you know, to my earlier suggestion, nobody, to my own, no, nobody from the governor's office ever said anything about this accuser or any of the other ones. Um, I would have been all over it. There was no, hey, here's a friendly piece about smearing the accusers. I wouldn't participate in it. I didn't want to see it. Uh, I was constant in my insistence on that. So, to, I would, I so what you're saying is, to your knowledge, no one in the chamber conveyed negative information about any of the complainants to the press. Is that right? I've never read anything that was 
a hit piece on one of the accusers. I've never seen it offered up by anyone who says they're a friend of Andrew on television. Mm -hmm. And I was never part of anything like that, and I never heard that anybody was going to do anything like that. How, what do you know about how Ms. Boylan's personnel file got provided to the press? I don't. I don't know how it got to her press. I also don't know that that qualifies in what I'm talking to you about. How is that different than what you're talking about? Because I think that too often we see in these situations that when you allege something, all of a sudden we start looking at you as a person. And I don't think that's right. Um, if there was some kind of transaction or some kind of <coughs> dynamic of something, then fine, that's going to be relevant to the consideration. But, you know, we, we all know what can happen in these situations about how the accuser now becomes uh, a target. And I don't buy it and I don't believe in it. And I didn't want that for my brother. Uh, I wanted him to respect this process and let it play out. So I'm trying to understand how releasing Ms. Boylan's personnel file to the press would not fit into the I didn't have of what you're just I don't know that that happened, and I had nothing to do with it, and I would never be in favor of it. What do you think, sorry, what do you think that was going to say? Something positive about her? No. Why would so he say how, something positive? How is this not a conveying, a talk, <coughs> conveying information about someone who potentially has something negative to say about the accuser? Because it was just informational that I had heard this. I never followed up on it. Nobody else ever followed up on it. But Melissa may very well. I know, she, I know she did not because I had subsequent were you conversations. Were it to her so that she didn't follow up on it? Were you sending it, giving her this information so that she wouldn't follow up on it? Presumably there's a chance you're sending it to her so she knows. I was relaying information that I had gotten in real time from a journalist. I was not doing it with any expectation of action. And I know for a fact there was no action. In fact, I later learned that there had been another iteration of this, that there might be a recording or something like that of this. And I told them to stay away from it and just focus on the process. Um, and I've always been consistent on that. And I would never be any other way. And I would never be part of any other way. Well, wouldn't the best way to make sure that they stay away from it is not to actually convey this information? Um, not necessarily. How, how does conveying the information? Because there was a lot of speculation often when accusations would come up. And my feeling is if I can have an influence on what I believe or don't believe, that, that is helpful. Look, all I can tell you is this, Counselor. I had absolutely no interest in seeing anything malicious or negative said about any of the people making an accusation. My belief is that that would only hurt my brother. And it would hurt the women involved, obviously. But I've never had any other interest. I've never done anything else. Anybody you interview, if they're asked anywhere near the right question, will say that I was on the opposite side of any effort like that ever. And I maintain that. You said that later there was some other iteration with the recording. What was the recording? I don't really know. It didn't come from me, but that there may have been some type of discussion or people who knew something, who were saying something about the situation. And I dismissed it. I said, what do you, who cares? Who cares? Sorry, you I have didn't. heard that since this time um, is saying things that are negative about it. I don't know that to be true. The, the recording that you're referring to, who is the recording of? I don't know. I, I kind of like half heard this. It's not a focus of mine. It's not something I find relevant. But it has some relation to the complainant who is alleged the governor groped her. I believe so. I don't know anything uh, about it. Okay. And you think in the course of answering Mr. Kim's question or Ms. Clark's question, you said that you were absolutely sure that Ms. DeRosa did not reach out to the complainants. Did you say that? Yeah, I asked her. And what did she say? No, I don't know anything about this. I don't know anybody related to it. Does that mean she didn't reach out after That's that? That's what she says. Okay. Have, has Melissa DeRosa ever told you a lie? <laughs> I don't know. Have you 
told you about this recording? I don't remember, honestly. Um, again, June, it's not something that is, um, it, it's not a possibility for me. It, it's just not the right thing to do. And I really do believe you have to give some deference to the fact that it hasn't been done. Um, I've never heard of a situation where there is any kind of concerted effort to have something happen and nothing like it happens at all. Um, now, this isn't just my reckoning. The record clearly reflects this. And it really matters to me. That's why I'm being expansive in my answers about it. In the text message chain about this, after you wrote, and that, and that they want to talk about her, and you wrote, I know, and I know this. Mm -hmm. why, why I didn't hear it from someone, you know, nobody told me. This was told to me by somebody, as opposed to I heard this from Josh, I heard this from this one, I heard this from that one. There was always a game of telephone going on right. with them. Okay. Um, and then the texts continue on the next page. Uh, and then on March 11th, you see there's a text message at the top. And if you flip um, through your blown up packet, you can get a better view of it. Yes. Um, and there's a text message Melissa DeRose, you, DeRosa sends to you. It says, I just got this from I heard from a person familiar that Beth called the Albany police yesterday and pushed them to open a criminal investigation. Um, did you speak to anybody about the... Um, criminal investigation being opened in Albany regarding the complainant who said that governor groped her? No. Okay. Did you, after you got this text message, did you speak to Mr. Rosa about the text message? No, not that I recall. Have you ever spoken to the governor about um, a criminal investigation being yes. done by, being done oh, by the oh, Albany police? Sorry, Council. That's okay. Um, yes. And what was your discussion with Governor Cuomo? Just about how he felt about it. What did he say? That there was no possibility of there being a criminal um, charge here or anything like that. And I was. Andrew. Oh, thank you. Andrew. I get that all the time. You've been talking for a long time. <laughs> um, that was his take. Um, and then the next text message in the chain is on the 12th of March. And you wrote, read this, and there's a long recitation uh, that appears to be something uh, Governor Cuomo might say. What is that text message? These were thoughts from my brother given to me that he wanted to make sure that the team had. This was already the, what was being worked with in the universe of possibility of what to say within the team. As I remember, this had come off him not liking uh, what was happening on the phone call in terms of the urgency that he thought the situation demanded. And he asked me to call him, and I spoke to him. And he was just saying, look, these are the points. These are the points. So there was some sort of statement being prepared for, for the governor. Andrew was exerting so much pressure to answer that I was not that I really mattered that much, but I was very much against. Uh, any idea of litigating this, I think, was and is a mistake. The pressure was so constant that eventually the response was, so write it up, Gov. What, you know, give us what you want to say. Let's see it. And this happened consistently throughout, where drafts would be done. Op-ed, this is what I'm going to say, this is what's going to come out, this is what I'm going to write. And this was part of that dynamic. This never came out to my understanding. Nothing ever did. So why don't we look at um, what's at tabs 24 and 25. 
25 and 26. And we'll mark them as the next exhibit. Okay. Are these similar, what you were talking about, having the governor draft up what he would say? Yes, in sum and substance, but I don't know that they all came from him. He could also ask one of the other people on his team to advance this. You know, in a way, I was doing that with the text, that he wanted these ideas put into the mix. And that's what I think these are also, at least in part. I see. So for 24, 25, and 26, you're not sure if any of these came from the governor, but what's in your text message to Mr. Rosek, that came from the governor. Yeah, I know, I know that just because I had the conversation. Um, I, don't, I don't think any of these emails are from me or, and then, or to me directly. You're included in them if you want right, to look at the two line. If it was about you, you were first. You know, you know what I mean? Like you were, it would be just to you, other people would be CC, you know. Um, this was just um, a courtesy, putting me on these. And um, you said nothing like this ever came out, but c can you look at what is at, um, we're gonna have to give it to you in a different document. Can I have someone's binder with tab 27, please? I don't have a 27. You don't. I'm oh. going to give you a 27. We'll redact that up later. I'm going to mark this as the next exhibit, and maybe we can give. That's okay. Okay. So this Governor's is a conference call with the media. A transcript that we've prepared of Governor Cuomo's conference call on March 12th. Okay. You see, he, he does make a statement about the allegations. Yeah, I didn't remember this. Okay. Does that refresh your memory about what the context was for your text message with Mr. Rosa and the draft documents we just looked at? No, because it was an ongoing, um, constant dialogue of things that he wanted to say. And this is not that. Um, this is not where his head was and is about what he thinks the best way to respond in this situation is. This is just a nod to what is simply true, which is people put a politician in power. They get to remove you unless for cause. Um, that is one point, but that is not his main point. His main point that he wants to do is to take on what he believes these allegations are really about. And I have been uh, very consistent in my feeling that you don't talk about the accusers involved and you don't talk about um, the allegations and point for point, <clears throat> point for point, you defer to process. And when you say that the, um, the governor wants to take on what these allegations are really about, are you referring to earlier when you told me that Governor Cuomo conveyed to you that he thought that these allegations were part of political animus against him? Yes. And has the governor ever conveyed to you um, how the woman who has accused him of groping her has political animus towards him? No. Have you been a part of any conversation where it was discussed what the political animus of the woman who gro alleges the governor groped her might be? No, I have not. Okay. So how does, how does she fit in to, to Governor Cuomo's narrative about what these allegations are all about? That's for him to answer. Have you been a part of any discussions with him about how she fits into that narrative? No. I don't participate, nor would I participate, in anything where my brother is going to litigate this directly about the women involved. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's helpful. And I think the process has to play out. There's a line um, in the transcript that we were just looking at together. Um, I yep, which is on the very first page of the transcript. In the fourth box that begins with, let me make a statement. Uh -huh. You see there's a sentence that says, I won't speculate about people's possible, mo possible motives. 
But I can tell you, as a former attorney general who's gone through this situation many times, there are often many motivations for making an allegation. What was your perspective on including that in the governor's statement? I had none. Were you consulted or discussed or part of any conversations about that sentence? No. Were you part of any conversations with Governor Cuomo about the possible motives of the women making allegations? Yes. That we, the ones we've just discussed, the political animus? Yes. Okay. Were you part of any discussions with Governor Cuomo about the possible motive for the woman who accused him of groping her? Ask me that again. Were you part of any conversations with Governor Cuomo about the possible motive for the woman who alleged he has groped her? Yes. And tell us about that. My brother speculates that um, it could be about money, that the divorce didn't give her uh, the money that she felt she needed, and that this could be an act of dis desperation. Um, and what did the governor convey to you about what he understands about her financial situation? Just what I said. That she may need money? Because the divorce um, settlement or whatever, however it was resolved as a function of that. Did he tell you who he got that information from? No. Um, did you ever discuss the possible motive for the woman who alleges the governor groped her with members of the senior staff and the consultings, consultants? No, not that I have any recollection of. Okay. Again, that is not a relevant discussion for me. Okay, I'll listen to it. You guys want to talk about it? Go ahead. Um, but I'm not going to stay on for long, and it, it doesn't matter. Just tell the truth, get in front of it, act like a leader, respect the process, ask for process, respect the process, and then you do what you want to do. And they take my advice or they don't take my advice. He takes my advice or he doesn't take my advice. I understand your perspective on it. What I'm trying to understand is, do you remember anything that any member of Governor Cuomo's senior staff or the consultant said about the possible motive for the woman who accused him of groping her? I don't specifically remembering anybody uh, talking about it. Okay. Do you remember anyone generally talking about that topic? <sighs> no, I remember them being surprised by this and believing that she liked the governor. And um, do you remember who conveyed to you that they believed the woman who accused the governor of groping her liked the governor? Well, Stephanie Benton. And I'm not sure who else. Maybe Melissa. Do you remember anything else about what, what Ms. Benton said? Yes. I remember her saying that there was, in fact, um, a, a, a dynamic where uh, Caitlin wanted um, to work more and needed money and volunteered um, to work weekends with Andrew. Anything else Ms. Benton said? That's what I remember. Was there any discussion you were a part of where it was, um, where there was a, strike that, were you part of any discussion in which whether uh, staff members from the executive chamber should continue to come to the executive mansion? No. Anyone, either generally or specifically? Not that I can recall. Were you part of any conversation in which the woman you understand to be Caitlin was discussed and, they, and there was a discussion that she should no longer come to the executive mansion? No, not specifically. Um, do you recall that there was... Wait, hold on a second. Sorry. No, please. Um, I vaguely remember there being some discussion about what happens now. You know, she came out with the complaint, but I think she was still working. <coughs> bless you. Um, bless you. If you don't do it every time, it doesn't count. You don't really mean it. Um, she was still working. Mm -hmm. And I do remember that, but, it, you know, like that was not relevant to me. Um, I think that was with Stephanie and Melissa. Do you remember before 
um, the Times Union article about the groping allegations came out, there being any discussion about changing the way staff came to the executive mansion, who came, who didn't come, when they came, why they came? No. Do you remember um, being part of discussions about a Ronan Farrow article related yes. to Governor Cuomo? Sorry. Okay. Yes. Okay. What do you remember about the Ronan Farrow article? Uh, they were very concerned, and it kept moving. What they thought it was about was moving. When it was coming out was moving. And what was the ultimate result? He wrote an article. Okay, and did you discuss that article with anyone? <sighs> yes, after the fact. I mean, again, it was just you know, Ronan Farrow writes something, people in the media are going to talk about it. Did you discuss the Ronan Farrow article with Governor Cuomo? Yes. Tell us about that discussion. Just asking him, you know, how, how he felt about it, what was in it, and him asking me what did I think the impact of it was. Can you tell us the substance of the conversation? He said that he didn't think the article was fair, um, that uh, she was being propped up, and, you know, that's it. The, the she you're referring to? I'm sorry, Who's she? Lindsay Boylan. Um, let's look at the text messages again that are between you and Mr. Rosa. Mm -hmm. So if you look on um, uh, March uh, 13th, mm -hmm. um, at the very top, you say, Biagi all but admitted they wanted to cancel him. What was that about? Um, Ms. Biagi saying on TV that they wanted Andrew out. They wanted him canceled. Was there any discussion you were a part of with Governor Cuomo about allegations Ms. Biagi had made about her interactions with the governor? I've never... To, to my memory, discussed Ms. Biagi with Andrew. Um, were you part of any discussions with his senior staff or his consultants uh, about Ms. Biagi? I remember hearing Melissa say that uh, she didn't like Biagi, Biagi didn't like her, and Biagi didn't like Andrew, and that she was being opportunistic. Anything else? That's all I remember. Um, if you go down a few texts on March 14th, you write, if Ronan has nothing better, better than Boylan, that's a great sign. Yeah. What do you mean by that? The concern was that Ronan almost always has more people. You know what I mean? That's part of his currency as a journalist, is that people come to him to expand understandings. I know he has his critics, but to me, that's when he's at his best. So the assumption was, he must have new people if he's waiting so long to have written about this. And then he didn't. So what the context is specifically is I had heard that all he was writing, the only person he was writing about was Lindsey Boylan. So that means that he didn't find more people to complain that once again, I would have to experience this team being shocked that there was another person, which was this never ending cycle uh, that was very hard uh, for a family member. That was the context. And then there's a dial-in circulated, and it's to discuss Ronan Convo. What do you remember about that call? I don't even know that I was on it. Um, the allegations that are in the uh, Ronan Farrow piece about Ms. Boylan, do you remember um, them being uh, additional allegations Ms. Boylan made about her interactions with the governor in that piece? I don't recall. Okay. You don't remember any conversation with anyone about additional allegations she made in the Ronan piece? No, I don't recall. And then on March 15th, you, she wrote to you, did you get any more intel? And you wrote, story not ready for tomorrow. She wrote, can you talk? What was that about? They didn't know when the Ronan piece was coming out. So I just ask people, do you hear anything about when the Ronan's piece? We do this with him all the time. It's a really good device that he has, that his people let you know that something's coming, but they don't tell you when, you know, so that there's, 
this constant speculation game. It's really effective in driving interest for his articles. Who did you get the information from that the piece wasn't ready for? I called a fellow journalist who works with Ronan a lot. And I didn't want to contact Ronan uh, directly. I know him. He's, uh, he's been good to me. He's been on my show. Um, but I didn't, want to, I didn't want to push up on him like that. It's not right. Uh, you, so, I, and I was told nothing's coming right away. Did you tell anyone at CNN that you were contacting people who had been on your show to ask them about articles being written about your brother? I never did. You never did what? I never did that. I thought you just told me you contacted someone who had been on your show to find out Ronan and Farrow. I'm sorry. Ronan Farrow had been on my show. I see. I had misunderstood. So who did you contact to find out if the, when the Ronan Farrow article might be coming out? Another journalist. And did you tell anyone at CNN that you were contacting journalists about whether uh, the Ronan Farrow piece about your brother would be coming out? No, not specifically. Generally? No, that's not something that would be out of the ordinary. Did you tell any, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary? To call you, other reporters about when reporting is coming out? Right, for you to make calls on behalf of the executive chamber or behalf of your brother to learn information, is that out of the ordinary? Well, I didn't see it that way. How did you see it? I wanted to know. And why did you want to know? Because there was going to be an article about my brother, so I'm interested. I wasn't going to call the person writing it. I wasn't going to try to influence any of the stories. And we know that that's true because you would have read about it, had I. It's not exactly uh, a loyalty-based business. If I had tried to influence any of the reporting at CNN or anywhere else, I guarantee you, you people would know. And so would a lot of others. So the idea of one reporter calling another to find out about what's coming down the pipe is completely business as usual. Let's turn to tab 30. I'm sorry, which tab? 30? 30, 30. Three what is this? I don't know. I, don't, I mean, it's me reaching out to them about something that I had seen or someone had sent me, and I was asking what I'm asking. This is the, what you're sending is someone sent to you. Is that right? Oh, um, that may be true. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. Let me look at the second page. Oh. The text says, Yes, yes. Uh, I think that's what it was about. Um, but I didn't know if these were the real documents or not. Mm -hmm. People put out fake things all the time mm -hmm. that look so legit. And I wanted to make sure, you know, I always want to make sure about that stuff. You know, you, you, you got to just, you got to get things right. Why did you want to make sure it was real? I wanted to make sure it wasn't fake because yeah. it was being circulated. And what were you going to do if it was fake? Tell them not to pay attention. Well, I, I wasn't going to tell them to do anything. I was asking them, mm -hmm. do you know about this? Because I had seen this from several different people involved in the ambit. And I didn't even know if it was real. And what did they tell you? The senior staff of the executive chamber and the consultants, what did they tell you? I don't remember, but I, I definitely wound up learning that it was true. Okay. And... Um, I didn't know until that point. I mean, yes, I had heard that something happened to her in college and that she was assaulted. And that, I mean, I, I knew that, but I didn't know um, the depth and what it meant to her and what, you know, where it had come from and what she had done already to deal with it in ways that people you know, don't want to do. Um, so to me, I was very affected by the realities of Charlotte Bennett's situation. She's unlike anybody else involved in this situation, in, in my estimation. And I got the sense that, that I just, I, I wasn't sure that that was 
shared. Um, that this wasn't just somebody saying something happened or referring to something. That there was depth to this. And it needed to be appreciated and respected. And, you know, was that shared? Yeah, by some. Did you have any conversations with anyone in the executive chamber or the consultants about how to potentially use the fact? Never. On the contrary, my conversations was, were not to lump Charlotte Bennett in, which was the temptation, which went to my conversations about you need to marshal your facts and know who you're talking about and treat people the right way here. Um, and that this situation had to be uh, given tremendous deference and respect. I understand that was your perspective. My question was, were you involved in any conversations in which anyone in the executive chamber or the consultants discussed? Never. Once again, sorry to jump the question. No. No one ever raised and any conversation you were a part of? No. No. Or anyone, this text says, is that language that was used by people in the executive chamber? I never heard it, and I don't agree with it, and I don't believe it to be true. I don't have any more questions about that, but do Ms. Clark. I was avoiding it. I was asking, is it fake? Like, I, I couldn't believe that it existed. Like, this had never been told to me before. You know what I'm saying, June? This had never been shared with me about the how. The question is have you seen this? Is it fake? Presumably, a natural reading of this is check this out. No. The natural, that may that, be yours. That, that's a, a reading of it. No, no disrespect. My actual reading of it was shock. Shock that the situation, the context, the history. Look, these are not good answers for my brother that I'm giving you right now. I understand that. But it happens to be the truth, OK? I didn't know this so much so that I said, is it fake? Because I thought maybe this isn't true, that this is just being brought up the way a lot of other stupid stuff does. And that's what it was about. Did any of your sisters ever discuss with you using this information? Not with me, no. Are you aware that your sisters had those conversations with anyone else? I have heard, I don't know about my sister, but I have heard that there were conversations about curiosity of what this was and what this was. With whom? Um, Steve Cohen. Uh, and may, maybe my sister, uh, Madeline. I have three sisters. But I was never part of any of those conversations. What do you understand Mr. Cohen and um, Madeline Cuomo did about that? Nothing, as far as I know. Did they look into it? I don't know. Did they discuss it with your with Governor Cuomo? I have no idea. Were you part of any conversation with the governor, his senior staff, or his consultants about how he could have hired someone into the chamber who was a sexual assault survivor? No. I'm going to move past March 15th unless you have more questions. OK. Um, you can put the binders aside. Um, were you a part of any conversations with Governor Cuomo about a complainant named Alyssa McGrath? Not by name. Um, I'll describe for you her. She is someone who works, works in the executive chamber and alleges, among other things, that the governor uh, looked down her blouse. I'm vaguely familiar with it. Okay. And what do you recall about discussions you had with Governor Cuomo about that complainant? Nothing. You didn't talk to him. You don't remember him denying it, him saying it's true, anything. No. What about with the senior? Well, that's not fair. Uh, sure. Uh, Go ahead, please. 
he's said that he never did anything that he believes was inappropriate. So, and as much as that, he never said it to me specifically about this allegation. You never specifically discussed with him, Ms. McGrath. Not that, that I recall. Okay. What about with the senior staff or consultants? Did you discuss her with them? No. Are there any complainants um, that you discussed with Governor Cuomo that I haven't asked you about today? I don't think so. When was the last time you were on one of these group calls with the senior staff and consultants strategizing? A while ago. And by a while ago, when is that? Um, months, a couple months. Um, around the time of the appointment of Mr. Kim and Ms. Clark, or shortly thereafter? I don't know exactly. What was the last conversation like that that you remember? I don't, I don't have any specific recollection of what the last call was. Um, what's the last conversation you had with Governor Cuomo about the allegations of sexual harassment against him? I mean, I guess um, I, would, I would count that the last time I saw him in person, um, I discussed, you know, what was going to happen going forward. And it was a conversation about the permutations of political outcomes. Um, but it wasn't about the accusers and it wasn't about the complaints per se, but it was about well, what's going to happen next. You know, they're going to write their report. When the, you are going to write your report. It's going to come out. Then what? You know, and, you know, and what, how long until the legislature? What about their report? And what about this other report? You know, it was that about me trying to get it hands around how much I have to not tell my mother uh, over the course of the next few months. And in that conversation with Governor Cuomo, did you or he discuss what you thought the report might say? No, not not the last time I saw him. I don't think so. Are there any occasions in which you've discussed with Governor Cuomo what he thought the report might say? Yes. Tell us about that. The governor, my brother believes that it's going to be a severe condemnation of him in every way possible. And when did he convey that to you? Um, you know, pretty much from the beginning of the process that this is going to be very badly. That's what the goals and aims are here. Wh whose goals and aims? Yours, councils, the AG, most of the media, um, many members of his own party. I think I, I asked you this, but I want to be sure. Mm. Are there yeah, any other we have two more minutes. I know I have one last question. Are there any other allegations? I asked you about complainants, but are there any other allegations of conduct that was inappropriate or that may have been of a sexually harassing nature that you've discussed with Governor Cuomo that I have not asked you about today? Not that I can think of. Um, Ms. Clark, Mr. Kim. Um, in talking to your brother about what he expects the report to be. Has he t discussed with you how he intends to respond if the report comes out as he expects? Yes. What has he said? That he intends on being very active uh, and taking on whatever he believes is unfair. And has, has he said any, anything more specific about what he intends to do to be very active? No, I think it depends on what you guys say in the report and what he thinks about why you said it. Um, and have you had any discussions with Melissa DeRosa about how, wh what the response might be to the report if the, the chamber doesn't like the contents? Not that I can recall. I mean, it's really, I think Andrew is very much keeping his own counsel. Um, is that accurate? I mean, he has lawyers, but I don't know that he's looking to his lawyers really for 
advice on politically what he feels he needs to say and do. Do you know if he's still talking to any of the group of advisors, Steve Cohen, the Smiths of the world, about how to respond? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, uh, as I told you at the beginning, I was going to offer you at the conclusion of our examination an opportunity to make a brief statement while you're under oath. Would you like that opportunity, or would you like a break to consider that with your counsel? Uh, no, I have no statement to make. Okay, all right. Other uh, than to, you know, thank you for the consideration. Appreciate your thoroughness, uh, and I hope that uh, you don't see it as a sign of disrespect that I relay what my brother believes about the process. No disrespect taken, and thank you for being with here uh, with us today. Thank you for doing it on very short notice and turnaround. I'll just remind you of what I told you at the very beginning, which is that because this investigation is being done under Executive Law 63-8, that law makes it a misdemeanor for you to discuss with anyone the contents of what you've discussed with us here today, including the questions we've asked you here today. Do you understand that? Yes. Thank you. No questions, no content. Thank you. Um, we can close the, the, the testimony. Time now is 2.36 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. You can just leave it.